All right, welcome everyone. Uh, appreciate you stopping by to watch us play Vossen, the Dance of Dreams. So for uh, anyone who doesn't know, what's that? Oh, he's I've like been pronouncing it wrong for oh, months. Trust me, man. I've I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I've heard Vessen, Vossen, Basen, Vossen. So, yeah, forgive me by the way for those that are Scandinavian. If anybody's watching this. None of us, or at least I don't believe, are Scandinavian. So apologies for the mispronunciation. Um, it's a free league game. For anyone interested, I'm going to show this really cool book real quick. This is not, of course, it's going to come up um, backward probably on the stream. But um, this is one of the source books for it. Very, very cool. Johan Eggerkranz is the uh, illustrator. So, <clears throat> all right. So I guess... Have you all taken a quick spin? Do you want me to run through, or have you guys already kind of run through the character sheets? Do we need to go through that, which I'm happy to, or are you guys good? Either way is fine by me. I watched your video okay. like an hour or two ago, so we're good. Awesome. Good. Rosh, you go. Oh, Rosh is frozen. Are you still? Okay, you're there. You're just on mute. I am here, yes. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, if you could just take a sure. walk through uh, some of the actions, that'd be great. Sounds good. So I'm going to go through, I just have the occultist open because I can't, since most of your seats are private, I won't be able to see them. So I'm just going to tick down here. Um, character details. So motivation, trauma, and dark secret, they're, they're much more flavor and role play. Um, there isn't a specific mechanic, but anytime you feel like you want um, any of these to come into play, certainly feel free to role play them. Um, the modifier section, I just did that in case for some reason you might have a rule where I say, hey, add a, add a plus one. So you'll just click the D6 next to one of these modifiers to add to your dice. Attributes, just like D&D, &D, this time you only you have four. St physique, basically strength. Precision, basically dex. Logic, probably more like intelligence and wisdom combined. And empathy is is somewhat like charisma but also um, just kind of how you can influence and understand people. Skills, so basically you have three skills tied to each of the core attributes. So you, I won't read through all these. You can run through each of these um, when you're uh, in combat. And combat's not that frequent in here. It's a lot more role play. But um, if you're just using like hand-to-hand -hand without a weapon, you're going to use force. And that's going to be like if you want to grapple or if you just want to punch or kick. Um, close combat will be if you do have, like, say, a knife or something, uh, a bat, a stick, something like that. And then we will have down a little bit further down, you'll have range combat, which is going to be if you have a pistol or a, a bow or something like that. Um, the rest of these you're going to use, um, you know, investigation, learning. Some of these are relatively close to each other. So if you guys want to use one versus the other, I'm certainly not going to stop you. They, I, I'm still learning which is, uh, which is used in which uh, situation. Conditions is basically hit points. So there, as you can tell, there are only four physical and four mental. And basically after you get three physical conditions or mental, when you get the fourth, you become broken, which is basically, you're not necessarily unconscious, but for all intents and purposes, you'll get like a critical wound. We'll go through that if that happens. But you know, if you do, basically what'll happen if you get hit or if you don't pass a fear test and you gain a condition, you get to select which one. I'll tell you, hey, it's a physical and you can decide if you're exhausted, battered or wounded. And again, you can role play those however you want. Um, there's no other mechanic other than you get a minus one modifier to all skill, te skill tests. Um, so if you take a physical condition, that'll apply to physique and precision, for example, but your mental conditions wouldn't be affected. Uh, equipment, all of you have some equipment. When we get into the game itself, we, I might do a quick little, if you all do want to uh, get any other equipment that you think is cool, um, we can do that. Armor is probably not going to come into play here. If you have any weapons, they'll be listed under weapons. Relationships, it's, it's up to you all. You can put these in. It's supposed to be mutual, meaning, I mean, there certainly shouldn't be any like uh, player versus player attacking here, but it can be a little bit of conflict. And, you know, if there's something you know, interesting in your backstories. You guys can feel free to, again, role play those as you want, or if you even want to message each other, go ahead and do that. Uh, talents, you all start with one talent. Um, some of them have a limited use, some of them don't. 
and I've noted it if there is a limited use, but otherwise you can kind of look at those and they're unique to each of you. Insights and defects will only go into that if you basically get your fourth condition that I'm going to have you roll and you get either an insight is something that's actually superhuman. You get another kind of special ability. So it's, it's kind of almost like a critical hit where it's a positive instead of a negative. And then defects are something that's really uh, is going to affect you. The nice thing about these is they will only come into play once per session. So it's not like you're going to be severely hampered the entire session. If you get this one time per session, I would just say, hey, this is what happens. Mementos, um, you can use this once per session to heal a condition. So if you get a condition and you want to use it and you can click on it to show that you've used it and you can just kind of role play what, you know, what do you do with your memento? Advantage, um, I'll, do, I'll get to that when we get into the game. I'll explain that. And resources, again, this one won't come into play too much tonight. That's more about purchasing equipment and, um, you know, if you barter, if you get into a situation in a campaign where you're going to be, um, you know, w uh, working with another NPC to, to buy some equipment. All right. So that is it. Any other questions? If not, we're going to jump into it. All right. Let's go. So, all right. So to give everyone in the stream a little bit of background here, uh, you and several others who have also have the site, which I think is everyone knows, but for the stream, um, it's kind of like the, the uh, series Grimm, if you've seen it. There's some people that have the site that can actually see these mythical creatures called Vasi. Now, no one else can see them unless they want to be seen, but um, the folks that are playing tonight do have the site. And you've all gathered in Uppsala in central Sweden. You've learned that you, there used to be an organization called the Society. Their mission was to study and in some cases combat the Vassen. But the last members of the Society went missing or left the organization about 10 years ago. And since then, the Society's headquarters, the old castle Ilenkrutz, which I'm probably butchering, by the Ferris River in Uppsala, has been left to decay. You've decided to reestablish this organization. Former member by the name of Linnea Elfenklint, an elderly woman who spends her days at the city's mental asylum, has given you the keys to the castle, along with the documents as its legal owners. You all have your reasons for wanting to track down Boston and protect people from them. And you'll embark on long journeys to remote villages and regions of the wilderness, attempting to uncover the secrets of Scandinavia. Armed with nothing but your courage, conviction, and ability to see the supernatural, you will come face to face with Vossen. Neither bullets nor steel can stop them. To drive them off, you must identify their weaknesses. And even if you succeed, your encounters with the Vossen of the North will leave you with scars that never heal. So you all are in the castle and you all do know each other um, in some manner or fashion that you can determine. So before we jump into the actual role play, let's just very quickly, uh, or not quickly, but go around and we'll introduce each player and uh, tell us whatever you want. You can keep whatever you want hidden, just who you are. If you have any social, feel free to tell me, any, tell the stream any, where to find you and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start, for me, the top is uh, Sin. Of course, I went to you first, you're on mute, right? <laughs> I always end up I always end up getting picked first when I do these campaigns. Um hi, I'm Acer Sin. Uh I have a Twitch channel which I only stream on weekly Sunday mornings, uh 10, tomorrow morning, 10 30 a.m. Uh it is my ongoing campaign that's about two and a half years old. Um lots of lots of fun, lots of very uh um interesting character development and stuff like that so good times uh i show up randomly on a variety of different channels across the interwebs uh mini terrain domain yarl dm uh over on youtube at erasmus expeditions and where i play various characters that are always in trouble for some reason i don't know why but tonight i'm uh playing the doctor archetype so um you know uh gonna maybe do some folks Maybe kill some folks. Maybe kill a monster. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? You don't know what the doctor can do. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thanks. We'll go to Urash Malta Ek. Good evening. Yes, Urash. I'm playing uh, Malta Ek. Uh, he is a hunter archetype, and uh, he.
carries around a rifle and likes to use the butt end of it. Um, he did have a fling with the Baroness in his past and uh, gotten a little bit of heat with some uh, cultic-like behavior with some of the elitists in the area, so he had to kind of get out of dodge and he's just looking to figure out what these Vessin are and if he should hunt them down. Awesome. We're going to keep going down to the bottom right, which is Nori. Yep, I'm Nori, uh, and I'm playing the Vagabond, so I travel from place to place. I'm a young man, you know, not the tallest, but I make up for it in my strength, and uh, I'm Rasmus Erickson. Awesome. Schmo, last but not least. Uh, I am FSH Schmo on all the social medias. Um, I will be playing uh, Mr. Oxwell, um, a reclusive reclusive writer. Uh, If you all get to know me, I might let you call me Mike. Um, I finally getting out and about after seeing, starting to have these weird things that I'm seeing. And I'm pretty sure that whatever I'm seeing stole one of my stories from me. And I'm going to find out who they were. Awesome. So, so with that, you guys are in the castle right now, and you have a caretaker who, by the name of Algo Frist, and there's a there's a knock at the door of the castle, and he opens the door, and you see him talk to somebody, and he and he he looks like he has an envelope that's been handed to him, and it uh, the envelope has a a red wax seal. And the, the wax seal says Clint on it. And as you guys get these images in the screen and the, in the bot, on the, the right hand side, you can kind of, you have to use that zoom minus and plus. So each of us controls how we see things. And you can also left click and hold and drag images around. So um, anyway, if you need to do that, as we look at maps and things, you can. So would anyone like to, uh, to take the letter and see what it has to say? I'll go ahead and reach out and grab the letter from Frisk, you said? Yes. I'll, uh, I'll take a look and I'll, I'll you know, I'll uh, look it over and I'll say, uh, Clint, uh, this is where it's from? It looks like, yeah, you're not sure if that's a name or a place. I'll uh, make the best reader. I'll hand it over to uh, Schmo's character, because I figure he might be a little bit more uh, better off. <laughs> taking a look i'll uh produce a, a little pocket knife and cut the wax seal and say let's see what we have here and and open it up and uh, attempt to uh to skim it over give it a one silver sounds good so you open it and as you look at it it is looks like it's a flyer and it, it says the dance of dreams uh, you're welcome. Would you like to read it? And if you can't read it too well on the screen, I can. But if you can, go for it. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll read it here. Um, I'm gonna ch- I'm gonna try to read it. Some of the cursive is a little. A little I'll fill in anything you can. Um, it says uh, so. I read it out loud. <clears throat> a Shadow play of horror, murder, and revenge. Uh, let yourself be what is that? enraptured, enraptured, and terrified by shadow theater and clockwork. And um, as amazing as that of the master's construction on the continent, watch as evil smiles, good people go to their down and spirits come to life. They're doom, I'm sorry. And spirits come to life. Fellow Follow. Oscar, what's that? Follow, yep. Follow Oscar Hyjort? Sure. Uh, yeah. In encounter with the, the black one, his struggle and finally the betrayal which has claimed his life. Hear the tunes of the enchanted flute that sends souls dancing to hell. The show will premiere shortly, and at the at the Witch Cat Inn. Which, yep. Not for the faint of heart. Uh, meet me tonight at the Witch Cat Inn. 
some kind of scribbly. It sound it signed Olas O L A U S. So um, if you if you guys are using the um, Legend Keeper, that invitation is now is now available. So if you guys do pop it and you want to look at some of that later, you can. Um, all right. So that is that is your invitation basically to um, to the mystery. And what typically happens now is you would make preparations for the journey and within Uppsala and also within the castle, there, there's a library there. So if there's anything from the letter that you'd like to investigate, um, let me know kind of what it is, what you'd like to read and investigate about each of your characters. And we can determine uh, what it is that uh, each of you may know. I'm sorry, Gwydion. What what was that? I was open. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I, I so basically the the invitation is is the kind of the entree to the mystery. So anything that's in there, whether it's the location, whether it's the person, you know, if there's anything that you guys want to potentially learn about, let me know, and we can uh, do some some roles and some investigation and see what it is you you know before you head out on your adventure. So Schmo will kind of um, look at uh, Rasmus and be like, uh, "You look like you have been traveled, my boy. Tell me, what do you know of this uh, rich cat end?" Uh, Rasmus will put his hand on his face and you know think for a moment or two and go, mm, "Doesn't ring a bell, but uh, let me think." So. Yeah, so Rasmus, if you want to um, give me a learning role, so if you scroll down to your skills and click on learning, it all should, unless there's something else that your character has under talents that could add to it, you can click learning and then roll. And if you get any sixes, let me know. I got a six, a three, and a three. Awesome. Six is all that matters. This is a D6, so you've got a success. So... So you know that um, the Witch Cat Inn is an inn at the crossroads north of Sigtuna. So Sigtuna is a fair bit south of Uppsala. And when the society was built, rebuilt after the Great Ulu Fire at the end of the 18th century, the inn was used as a gathering place. As the innkeeper at the time, Piri Harjula, was a Thursday's child. Now, a Thursday's child is someone like all of yourselves. That means they have the site. So today, the inn is run by Puri's grandson, Sammy Harjula. So if you all, um, you should now see again, and I won't keep saying this, but just to remind you for a bit in Legend Keeper, you'll kind of see some of those clues that you can go back and look at is now available to you. What else? Any Anything else, Sin or Urash, that... Um, I should start saying your character names that you all would would want to investigate a bit or think about. Um, I think once the letter is done being read and Rasmus looks at it, Margaret kind of walks over and she <sighs> kind of rudely, but not in that kind of more. It's more of a just a like, kind of logical and direct to the point she kind of grabs the paper and maybe like gives it a little snap and like pulls it away so she can start reading it and she looks it over and well i don't know jeez oh, this uh struggle and betrayal which claimed life and death spirits coming to life it's just ugh. she kind of chills her shoulders a little bit and so yeah i'd like to kind of do maybe an investigation or a learning or something on those two things anything what? that has to do with the life and death type of Thing that's going on in the letter that sounds great yeah so uh give me whichever whichever you want I'll, I'll either investigation or learning if you're more proficient in one or the other go for it uh they're the same so i have oh a lot of dice for that popped up hold on let me hit clear just to make sure because i was in here testing you might you might uh depending on what you're yeah it says two and then i clicked it and there was like seven so i'm not going to turn seven of them down i will go ahead and hit that roll button Man, I didn't get a single success. Okay, so now it's up to you, but you can also, just so everyone knows, you can push your rolls. 
what that means is basically in, in your case, you had, uh, I think seven dice, but because you had no sixes, you can reroll everything, but it would come with a condition. So we would have to give you like, we might give you a mental condition for the rest for now, and maybe you can heal it later, but if you'd like to, you can, if not, we don't have to. I'm good for now. It's not that vitally important. All right. So, so you're, you're thinking and you can't, um, yeah, you, you just can't remember much. Um, but you do, I mean, you are able, the only thing that you do know is, um, you know, Algo is, is kind of overhearing you guys and listening and he kind of shakes his head like newbies, like, you know, these, these people still don't know quite what they're doing. And, and he does kind of bring over a, a book to you and it's, it's a list of society members. And the list mentions a man named Oscar Hort. And Oscar Hort um, lived in the 18th century. He worked as a writer and spent some time in Paris studying under Francois Dominique Seraphine, a famous artist who put on shadow plays for the court at Versailles and the Palais Royal. So Malta, what about you? Are you, uh, are you what are you doing as everyone is? It's kind of looking and investigating various things. I've heard whispers of this uh, black one. Uh, I'm trying to recall any memories I might have on that. Uh, that uh, ended his life, I believe. And then Olas, can we uh, ask Algo or check around to see who he might be? Sure. Why don't you give me again? You can do a learning, or or if you'd like investigation, I'll I'll take either of those. And no sixes. Would you like to push? Uh, not not at this. Okay. Point. All right. So there's you know the only thing that um, that you know is that. Um, there is a private detective, and you guys would kind of know this, um, understanding the town a bit. There is a private detective in town um, named Olas Clint. And he, he's got a small house in the middle of the city, so, uh, you know, you are at least vaguely familiar with him. Um, and he's made a name for himself as an expert in cases involving the occult. So that's, that's most of what you all know. So before we decide to embark on this journey, a couple things typically happen. And given we're going to try to make this a three-hour session tonight, we're not going to go into this too deep. But if each of you are allowed to um, basically get one advantage. And the way to think about it is you'd look at your skills. And if there's something like throughout the game you're thinking might be of use or interesting, you can basically gain an advantage, which will give you plus two, which means two extra dice to whichever skill that you'd like. So if you want to go down to your advantage and and type in um, whichever skill you want it to be for, just to remember it. And if anyone wants to to tell me, you know, like it could be like as an example, somebody has a rifle and you spend a half an hour uh, practicing on the range. So you're going to have a plus two for the rest of the adventure. So if anyone wants to role play or say anything about their advantage, go for it. And if not, um, definitely uh, go down and at least pick an advantage and, and remember that for the future. And while the players are doing that, thanks again for folks that are joining us. Um, is Vasen. Get advantage with his rifle by uh, he has spent the last week uh, out hunting and using his rifle frequently. Okay, sounds good. And while you guys are thinking about that, if there is, um, if anyone's finished, like uh, Rush, if you're finished, if you if you scroll down to the bottom where it says assets, if you click on that white bar, and you click under PDFs. There are a bunch of PDFs that you don't necessarily need to, to fully know, but if you want to click on equipment, if there's anything else you want to take a look at your character and if there's any other basic equipment, like you think maybe one other thing that you'd like to bring, feel free to add that to your character sheet. Um, don't have to again, but typically there's kind of a preparation phase where knowing that you're probably going to be going to this inn, you're going to be traveling, if there's anything you think 
would be of interest. Uh, and that goes to, to each of you. If anybody wants to pick up any other equipment, um, you'd basically just type it in and, and just type in the, uh, uh, the skill that would be uh, included with that. Just let Mr. me. Uh, yeah, Mr. Oxwell is going to grab investigation for advantage. All the sounds good. The reading and the research and stuff like that. That's good. Um. Uh. I think hmm, I was going to go investigation, but since he did, I think I might go learning just to kind of spread the. Sure. Spread the wealth. Advantage around. So, yeah, I'm going to go with learning, and that's just, uh, you know, uh, Doc Mar Margit. Margit, I'll go with. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Doc Margit, her, uh, you know, she just, um, obviously studying in books and stuff, but just even various, you know, she's worked at all levels of types of things. She's, been in mortuaries and just her general experience in the different medical fields and kind of flitting around in the different departments has made her very adept to gaining new information quickly and being able to retain it and understanding how to look at new information and then carry it the next six steps forward to ask the right questions. Yeah. Very cool. Asmus, do you have yours picked? You don't have to go through it if you don't want, but um, are you are you good? Who was that directed at? Sorry. Me? Oh, that was you, Rasmus. Yep. Okay, just checking. I didn't hear the first part. Yes, so uh, Rasmus, being no stranger to being snuck on, up on by Vassin, is going to go with uh, Vigilance as his uh, advantage. I like it. Awesome. All right, any other equipment anyone wants to grab? Feel free. And uh, I'll be, uh, he's going to take the... Uh set of binoculars. He uses those to uh, search for prey when he's hunting. So he'll have those in his pack. Okay. Okay. Rasmus is grabbing some rope and just remarking that, well, rope's always handy. Rope is always handy. I can't argue that. Um, Marjit has this kind of odd contraption that she occasionally uses and it's this set of fancy goggles, but the thing that's important about them is that they have like a secondary light source that can kind of be used and generated. So she will occasionally use those. Sometimes, you know, when you're elbow deep in a in a cadaver, you need to be able to see where you're reaching. So makes a ton of sense. See if uh, let's make sure Urash is still here before we keep going. Okay, he's good. I'm ready. All right. So um, as you guys finish preparing, um, there is a carriage driver that um, kind of comes out and ushers you uh, ushers you in for uh, the journey. And it's going to be uh, probably about an, about three and a half hour journey as you're um, heading in a, in a carriage from Uppsala. So give me a moment, tell me this is too loud or not, but I'll let you all give this a listen. Hopefully. With my sirens here. Wait. So well before. It is fall when you leave Uppsala in a coach heading south, and there is a terrible storm raging. Black clouds blanket the sky, with the wind howling and rain and hail pouring down, leaving you soaked to the skin. Lightning cracks across the sky and thunder makes the horses rear and whinny, but the coachman drives them on with his whip. The journey takes three and a half hours, and the storm grows increasingly violent as you progress. Through the coach window you see Lake Mailer in the west, its foaming waves splashing against the shoreline. Traveling through a pine forest, you see tall trees being knocked to the ground by tempestuous winds or split by lightning strikes. In the flashes of lightning you see large rocks among the trees, moss-covered lumps staring back at you. Suddenly the witch Catin appears at a T-junction, surrounded by woods, with Lake Mailer to the north and west. It seems to be the only building around. The coachman is eager to drop you off and continue on his route south to Sigtuna. 
Halfway between the it is and the small community in a distant heading to a lonely church there is tower a terrible storm from the trees. He starts to go through it again. So you guys arrive at um, the Witch Cat Inn. So you're um, you're just outside, and it's it's a kind of a large main building. Uh, next to it, you see a, a stable that looks like it has a uh, couple of of horses in it. Um, and as you're as you're kind of looking at the stable, you notice um, a man, kind of a a tall man. Um, he looks like he's probably about forty-ish, well-groomed beard, round glasses. He's wearing a, a very worn jacket and hat, and he's standing kind of right outside of of the uh, stable, just underneath its awning to uh, to stay out of the rain and wind as you guys are getting out of the carriage. Um, it's it's still coming down and and raining, and uh, he kind of looks over at you and motions you all to uh, come closer to him and, and to get out of out of the rain. I will do so. All right. So you you head over to him and he introduces himself and he says, welcome, I, I take it you received my uh, invitation? She kind of like shakes her hands and fluffs some of the rain off of her. And... Well, yes, obviously we're here, aren't we? It's true, true. He says, you know, I've I've heard that that you all are are like myself, interested in in matters of the cult and possibly Thursday children as well. Yes. Uh, other people from these uh, vile pieces. As do I, as do I. Um, I've been at the inn now for a few days and there was, there was a power here, which is, is really why I reached out to all of you. It's, it's too much for me. I, I don't, I just can't figure out what is happening, but I figured with more of us here, um, you know, perhaps we can, uh, Determine, determine what, what is happening here. Raz will kind of, his interest will peak at the remark about feeling of power and will say, uh, what do you mean? Like, uh, when you say, how does the power feel? Well, he, he thinks for a moment and he um, kind of pulls his, the, the remaining drag off the butt of a cigarette and he, and he puts it on the ground and and takes his, his shoe and, and smashes it into the into the wet ground and he says there have been very, very strange dreams at the end here. People report and it's many people, it's it's not just one person, but many that um that the building is in the grip of of some type of magical power and, and force. And it's you know, these these dreams I I, I haven't yet um been able to determine exactly the cause or the source and and i'd love to understand more what they are but there's there's something here that is is certainly not not ordinary what is uh, like since we're special and can see these uh, creatures and stuff what is like people that can't what is their perception of us do they think we're just a bunch of wackadoodles or do they understand that something else is going on they've heard stories and, and rumors and so some people believe you know some people believe that Vossen exists and, and others you know do think that you know you're a little little out there and think you're you're all a little bit different um so yeah it depends olas obviously being similar to you all um believes but yeah, it just it just depends. And he, he takes a moment and, and he he also he says, you know, the the flyer that I sent you about the, the dance of dreams, um, that's been spread all over, all over Upsal. Because it's uh yeah, I don't he doesn't quite understand what it what it's about, but 
Um, you know, he said this, this is something that it's odd, but uh, certainly interesting. So you don't know who's spreading these around? He said, well, it's um, certainly the, the daughter of the innkeeper, uh, Sophia, um, the, his young teenage daughter, she's, she is, uh, talks about this play that she's performing. You'd, you'd have to talk to her or perhaps some of the other guests know, but uh, there's some type of play that she is, is trying to uh, perform that she seems very, very excited about. Well, that's just absolutely wonderful for her. Uh, shall we, are we going to just sit around talking all night or is there more to do here? He says, no, no, uh, please, um, let's, let's come inside the inn. And if, if you all would like to uh, go inside the inn, he kind of ushers you inside out of the rain. Um, that's more like it. She'll head over to whatever heat source is in the room. I don't know, a fire or something maybe in the room. Sure. And so you guys might have to, yeah, you might have to resize this a bit as I am doing the same for the stream. Um, so as you, as you make your way in inside and give me one second. So it's, um, no, it's pretty lively and, and happening. Um, you, you know, you see uh, a number of, of folks as you come in and let me put all of you on the, uh, on the map, give me a second. Um, in fact, ah, I should have put your names on these. Well, that's okay. We'll do this now. I can find which is which. Or actually, you know what? I won't. I won't worry about it since I didn't uh, previously. But you can kind of see where all, and we can talk about where you go. Um, so as you, as you get into the uh, the witch cat in. Um, the ground floor has a, a large fireplace, um, actually double fireplaces in, in kind of the eastern corner. There's a kitchen with a bar, and it looks like um, kind of a storage room behind uh, behind it. Um, you see what um, appears to be the owner and proprietor that's kind of behind the bar. He's barking out orders to the, uh, the cook that's behind him. Um, you see a number of, of patrons that... Um, Appear to be enjoying their their drinks, and Olas kind of comes in and kind of moves over towards the the fireplace to kind of get out of the uh, out of the the rain. And and it's interesting because although it looks somewhat nice inside, um, you also notice that there are are buckets and pots everywhere that are catching um, rain and uh things that are coming in from the uh the outside so you know there there appears to be some deterioration in the building and and in fact as you as you open the door the you know one of the hinges kind of pops off a little bit and, and the door doesn't completely fall down but um there's something's just a, a bit off as you know this rain is is kind of coming in um as uh, it's still relatively lively and people seem to be ignoring it for the most part, but um, you see a, a waiter that's kind of tall and thin that is, is kind of walking over to the tables and, and feeding various guests. And um, based on what Olas has said, you believe that um, the innkeeper's got daughter, Sophia is kind of waiting to, uh, to get some drinks from the, from the bar and, the bartender looks at you, his name, any, any motions you all in, says, come in, come in, please, uh, please, out of the, out of the storm. Mike will uh, kind of ruffle his coat a little bit and get the water off and kind of look around the, the building and kind of let out a sigh and wander up to the bar and, and order a, order a, a drink mumbling something about I should have stayed at home. And so uh so the individual behind the bar, he's uh it's kind of a he's got a large beard, he's got these piercing blue eyes, short, stout, appears to be you know probably about 40 years old. He introduces himself and he says, "I you know, welcome. Uh I'm the proprietor here, Sammy uh Sammy Hardula. 
Uh, nice to meet you. What is it uh, I can get you? Would you like a, uh, can I get you a glass of mead, a glass of wine or beer, wine? What, what, what can I, uh, what can I offer you? I, uh, we'll take some kind of bourbon if you have it. Ah, he says, yes. Uh, a man of good taste and kind of just, just disappears for a moment, kind of comes back behind the, behind the bar. Um, and, and he comes back and he says, here, here you go. He, he puts, uh, he says, I, I assume neat or would you, would you like ice with that? Or do you drink it neat? Uh, neat. Kind of dies as if thankfully someone of taste here. And he says, um, what, what brings you all, uh, in here this, uh, this fine evening. Uh, take a little sip and then just kind of turn off and walk back to my group. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And you see the, the waiters are kind of going back and forth. Sophia, um, gets some drinks and she goes over to a, a table of, you know, there's a woman up in the corner here that's, uh, sitting by yourself kind of having a little wine and, and snacks and you kind of hear the the gentleman that's up um towards the uh top here seems to be enjoying themselves he's getting just getting a little just a touch boisterous um it's clear that he's uh, been drinking a fair bit and the uh you know someone that looks like looks like they're a priest who kind of has just a casual um you know, clergy uh, attire, simple black clerical collar, but dressed pretty sharply is just enjoying his dinner and, and having a, a, a little uh, glass of wine as he uh, has his dinner. So what is, uh, what does everyone like to do as you guys come in out of the rain? Um, Marjeet's going to kind of walk in and shake herself off a little bit more again. Um, she's very annoyed with this rain. And she's going to start walking towards the fire. And I believe you said the guy in the center is also a waiter, correct? Sven, Sven uh, the one that shows that carrying the tray is a, is a waiter. And then uh, Sven and oh, Sophia okay. are both waiters. I'm going to try to go ahead and throw some tokens on if I can get them close to what you all are. One second. So she, yeah, go ahead. She enters. She's going to walk in, shake off a little bit, and she's going to um, walk past... Um, She's going to kind of walk past Sven and she's going to just look over at him and she's going to say, uh, black tea, rum, hot. I'll be over there. Thank you. And she'll head over to one of the, the fireplace that's like more towards the south. And uh, excellent. Excellent. Raz will uh, follow suit, but as he passes Sam, he'll just kind of flash his coat open and be like, I bring my own. And kind of show his little bottle. Got it. Alti's going to stop at the bar and pick up uh, a couple glasses of red wine and walk over to the table where the, the priest is or the clergyman. And would you like a glass of wine? Set one on the table and sip on his own. Excellent. So I think, let's see, I've got one, two. So I've got the, um, no, which one did you grab? Like, I don't know who... You can be either this or that can be the vagabond. Let me grab one other person. Uh, the long-haired one's the one that matches my token, so that's fine. I get the priest. Let's do whoever. If uh, so, I'll let um, yeah, I'll let Sin Sin. You can be kind of this one over here, and then Schmo and uh, Rasmus can decide who which one of these you you all want, just so I can kind of see where you are. Oh, okay. I feel like the one on the right fits my character icon more, so. Okay, sounds good. With the guy with the hat. So, Malta, you, uh, you go up to the, um, the father, and um, he introduces himself, and he says, welcome, welcome. He said, has, has Sammy, if Sammy hasn't offered you a room yet, um, I'm quite sure he will. Uh, there's, there's plenty of room here, and, and the weather is horrible tonight, so. If I were you, I would uh, certainly stay here this evening. Nice, good advice. I did have a question for you, though. <clears throat> there's word that there's uh, disturbances in the area. Have your parishioners uh, been complaining of dreams or any strangeness? 
he says, um, hmm, there have been, there have definitely been some unusual uh, items here, some unusual happenings, so to speak. And he says, um, you know, this past year, the inn has deteriorated horribly. So the roof leaks, the boards break, the garden has become overgrown. And this is despite the fact that Sammy works extremely hard to maintain the end. And he kind of lowers his voice a bit, takes a, a little sip of his wine. And he says, it's, it's almost like the witch cat is accursed. Since walking in here with the water dripping everywhere, that's unusual. So there's no, not been any kind of uh, stomping on the roof or anything that would do the damage to the end that you know about? No, it says not, not that we can think of. It just, it's odd. The more, the more Sammy seems to double his efforts to repair, the more it seems that, that things continue to uh, fall apart. Overhearing the conversation, uh, Raz will ask to the, the gentleman speaking, uh, how's the family old enough? Uh, to, sorry, father or... I'll ask about uh, Sammy's family. He's, uh, I'm assuming he's got like a wife and daughter. Yeah, so give me some type of, and you can do it like, uh, you can do a manipulation if you're trying to, or you can do um, you know, maybe an observation, but um, give me a role that you think would be appropriate uh, based on what you're trying to accomplish. And let's see if you get any successes with yeah, it. Yeah, I'll roll uh, manipulation and I'll, you know, I'll say to the father, you know, it's gotta be real hard on his family life and just kind of maybe kind of lead him into a conversing about it. Okay. And I did not get a six. All right. It's again up to you. If you'd like to push it, you certainly can. And if not, then, um, you know, we can certainly keep, uh, folks can continue uh, their dialogues. You, it's up to you, Rasmus. Not yet. Um, what about, uh, Mar is it Margit? Margit? Margit. I've been saying, uh, I think I, what was I saying? Margit? Margit. I think mm. I was saying Margit. Margit. Yeah. Uh, she's going to kind of stand there, um, looking very annoyed still at this rain that's all over her. And she would probably kind of wiggle her way down to this guy over that's standing over here. Klaus, I think is that's Olas. So that that's the that's the detective that was outside with you all. Oh that's um actually. he's just kind of warming himself. So um but you've got kind of the the waiter that's walking back and forth. You've got this gentleman seems to be just drinking up at the top. And uh yeah, she'll go got... this way towards the woman with the wine. All right. And, um she'll go ahead and um, kind of sit and like maybe wiggle her way up into the fireplace and stuff and well, I'm not uh, being a bother and blocking the heat for you am I dear? There's no 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 I I, I love the, the company as you can see there's there's not too many other uh, women here but uh, thank you um, you know feel free to to join me what uh, what brings you here? You know, um, just some friends and I in town, um, supposed to see something. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, I just kind of go where the whims take me, you know? I understand. I myself have, am on my way to Uppsala, um, going to be teaching at the university, but, um, stopping here just, just for the night. Interesting. And what is it you teach? Uh, chemistry, my dear, chemistry. Um, tell me the most interesting chemistry thing you can think of. Well, that's, that's very challenging, but, uh, I myself, you know, I, I like to, to show the kids a good show. I like to, to show the combustion. They, uh, that always seems to give them a good laugh and, um, it, it gets them interested. Kids these days, you know, uh, they just uh, don't seem to have an interest unless something's exploding. I understand they, you, unless something's exploding. 
it's all what's in it for me right now what where am i what am i going to get out of this no one appreciates learning for the sake of learning anymore if you know what i mean i do indeed i do indeed are you, are you all staying the night here i, I believe we are maybe i don't i don't i, I think so I would hate to go back out into that wretched weather. Yes, that is that is good. Although I, I hope the weather breaks tomorrow because this is, I've been here just a couple of nights as I as I mentioned passing through. But um, I, I tell you, um, and she kind of lowers her voice a little bit, and she she kind of looks around and is trying to ensure as Sophia walks away a bit and goes back to the uh, to the bar to uh, to get another round of, of drinks and maybe a little little more food. Um, she says, I, I at first didn't believe it, but I, I experienced them myself. And she said, um, yes, here, including myself, ha are having terrible, terrible nightmares. And she, she looks almost embarrassed and she takes another sip of her wine and she says, you know, I've been dreaming of, of someone cutting my throat with a, a sharp, sharp serrated knife and, and being buried alive i don't know what this this can be uh it's you know and, and and then i had this one dream where my my friend who isn't even here but i i dreamed that my best friend was actually the devil can you imagine i i just there's something something odd about this place um so kind of a um I'm assuming she probably has her tea by now. Yes. Yep. She'll take a sip off of her spiked tea and... Uh, I mean... I'm not a... one to poke into the minds of others, but it sounds like... Perhaps... You... Are you in this friend? Are you, are you on the outs at all? Or have you had a disagreement as of late? There's no, no, nothing of the sort. It's, it's odd. We're, we're best friends. No, no reason that uh, that should be the case. Uh, I, I really don't know what to say. I mean, perhaps your, your humors are a bit off and you just need to get a good rest and you're stressed about your new position. Could be, could be. Who is, uh, who is uh, sitting next to uh, father? Is that Schmo? Is that you, or is that Rasmus? In the table, that, but um, that's right. That's you, Rasmus. Yes. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Um, so while you're up at the table, then Sophia does come a around and comes up to Mr. Oxwell and says, and and to you both, she she first stops to at Mr. Oxwell and says. You know, can I can I help you? And her, her voice is almost she almost whispers as she she talks, and she her eyes kind of keep glancing away. She doesn't doesn't really seem to want to make really good eye contact. And she's a tall tall uh, girl. She looks looks about sixteen. Brown hair. Um, she has almond shaped brown eyes, and you you kind of notice. And she she pulls up her shirt just a little bit. You notice some some bruising just just a bit above her, kind of around her uh, collarbone and maybe even just a little bit on her cheek, although um, maybe there's some makeup that covers it up, but you can see just, just the hint of a bruise. And she says, you know, is there something I, I can get you, uh, get you, sir? Um, <clears throat> Michael kind of looked at her and be like, tell me, uh, the same person that uh, is pouring the drinks, do they do the repairs on the, the roof? Because my drink's about as watered down as this building. And she, you know, her, her face just flushes. She looks extremely embarrassed. So I'm, I'm sorry, sir, I, I, I can replace that. And I, I assure you, my, my father, this, this is his life. He, he loves this place. And, and in fact, he wants, wants me to take it over, but he, he he takes as good care as he can, but uh, whatever he does, it just always seems like there's something else wrong. Um, so I, I, I apologize. Can I can I refresh your your drink for you? No, no, I I, I think that'll that'll be fine. Um, 
Do you have anything to eat, perhaps? Absolutely. And we have a, a nice cheese plate. We have some some uh, venison this evening. And I, I am more than happy to go ask Anjali uh, to, to whip something up for you, if, if you'd like. Um, and please, um, would you all like to stay this evening? It's, it's very, very... Uh, dreary out tonight, and they say it won't get much better. Would you Would you please stay with us for the evening? So I, I perk up at the side of venison and and nod to to that, and says, "Yeah, I I, th I think we will be saying, but I can't speak for everybody. Uh, but I, I know I will for sure need a room." Okay, well, let me speak to my father, and and I will be right back with that venison. And her and she looks at, at you, Rasmus, and she she says, "What is there something I can get for you?" Uh, yeah, some venison as well. Thinking about it, quite hungry. Excellent. Ex I, um, yeah. Watching, watching her, I would imagine um, me being a, a writer, watching people from my window. I, I'm definitely a people watcher. Can I use an observation to kind of just observe her movements as she goes around to kind of pick up on any ticks or anything she might have? Yeah, one hundred percent. Give me an observation roll, and and no problem at all. All right. So how do I do that? Just click the D six twice. Is that right? No. Uh, nope. So all you all you should have to do is is go to the D six under observation, click it once, and it should load the dice pool, and then you should be able to roll, and it should add automatically your. Um, I think that's empathy. Didn't see the roll, but. Um, Okay, yeah, rolled four, five, six, seven dice. None of them is six. Excellent. Okay. So again, you are, oh, it's funny. It's just now popping up for me. It must be delayed. That's interesting. Um, so again, you can push if you'd like, but you don't have to. No, I, I'm going to, I figure that um, with, with me having a, almost a full glass already, my mind might be getting a little foggy. Okay. So she walks up and as she's uh, just getting ready to go back to the bar, she goes, oh, I, I'm so, so sorry. And she looks at the ground again and she looks up at you and uh, Malte and says, how about you? Would you, would you like something? Yes, young lady. Uh, the venison sounds good. And I understand they're putting together some type of uh, theatrical uh, event. And, and as you, as she says that her eyes, her eyes just light up. And just for a moment, she, she makes direct eye contact with you. And she says, yes, yes, did, did, did you get the flyer? The, the Dance of Dreams, it, it, will, it will be a, a little bit later this evening, but um, we will have that uh, up in the attic. Um, I, I, I can't wait to show you. And, and she like genuinely smiles and, and um, is grinning from, from like ear to ear. Um, and, and then she kind of catches herself for, for a minute and, and then she kind of puts her eyes back down again and she kind of gives a, you know, um, I would say, Mr. Oxwell, you notice this more than than most, but she gives kind of a, a furtive glance over at the bar and, and notices that her, her father is turning to talk to Anjali. And she almost almost looks like she breathes a, a little bit of a sigh of relief. Um, and then she quickly kind of gets back into her her normal demeanor of, of being very, um, very quiet and says, oh, oh, OK, I hope to see you later. And and she turns quickly and and puts her head down again and, and goes back to the bar and and you can see her talking with her her father and, and giving him the giving him the orders and in the meantime father looks at at the rest of you and says wow it, you all have a a big a big group here what else what brings what brings all of you here to the uh, the inn this evening children or what was it called? Go see the Besson. Thursday's children? That's what uh, Thursday's children. Yeah. Yeah. And he he says Vesson. Hmm. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure I believe in 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 what I've heard to be Vassen. Um you know certainly I believe in the devil. I believe in God, of course. Um, and he says, if, if, if I ever need it, though, and, you know, I am 
I am ready. And he kind of kind of opens his uh, jacket just a bit and he pats on, on one end, he pats what appears to be a, a vial of holy water and kind of puts his jacket back. And then he opens the other part of his jacket and, um, you know, he kind of pulls out a, a rosary and he says, you know, I try to be, try to be prepared for, uh, for anything I can. Um, and he says, this has come to, come to think about it. And he says, Sophia, you know, her mother was, was very much, um, very much like her. He says, Sophia shared her mother's interest in occultism and art. And he, and he kind of he makes sure that Sophia and Sammy aren't, aren't really looking at you. And he says, but Sammy has forbidden her. He can't do anything except take care of this inn because he wants, he really wants her to take this over when he's gone. I think uh, Brigitte probably would excuse herself from a woman that she's talking to. And so the father is telling this about them, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. She kind of hearing this and hearing them talking about this girl and the girl taking over and stuff and observing kind of the interactions while she was sipping tea and talking to this woman about mundane education things. She probably, uh, excuse me, dare, and she gets up and walks over and she kind of sips her the last of her tea down, and kind of takes like a, takes a swig kind of hard and, well, I don't really think that that's appropriate. I don't think that any man should tell a woman what she is or is not going to do with her life. And perhaps art would bring more people to this inn. You never know. And she sets her cup down, kind of a little agitated. And she, you, she's saying that to uh, to Lisa. You're staying up by where Lisa is? No, no. Oh. Uh, no, she walks over to the table, to the to the group of guys. Like, ah. He excuses himself and she comes over to the group. Got it. Okay. Um in response to Margie, Margie excuse me, say, well, I think that's bad. You should have seen the world school. Should have seen what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. You think that's bad. You should have seen the welts on her neck. I want to take a look at it. Maybe I will. And um, so while you're, you're doing that, uh, Sven comes back and pours another, or brings another drink for uh, the gentleman that's sitting up at the top table. It looks like he's, he's a few pints in. He's, he seems to be chatting a, a little bit, not a, not a full-blown conversation, but he seems to be talking to himself just a bit as he gives the, uh, the empty glass to Sven, and Sven kind of walks back away. And um, in the meantime, um, Sophia you know, kind of dips back behind the bar for a bit and, and is waiting for the, for the food to come, come back. speaking to himself and says, ah, someone should not talk to himself and goes up to uh, and introduces himself and says, uh, hello, uh, I heard you saying something. What was that? And he says, well, who, who are you? You're, you're welcome. Welcome to sit down. Most nights I'm just drinking by myself. So I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to en engage in conversation with, with anyone. And he kind of, kind of gets like a, a little bit, too close to you and then like he's you know he's, he continues to drink and he's almost like in your face kind of like you know un that uncomfortable like he doesn't really understand his sense of space uh, and he's like almost in your face as he he talks to you and says do you do you have a drink uh drink drink up it's it's a horrible night it's a horrible night and sammy here he'll uh, you know he kind of makes sure nobody else is is really paying attention he said you know um given Given I'm Sammy's best friend, you know he'll he'll give us drinks as much as we want. And uh, he'll casually work his way around to the other side of the table to kind of get a little distance between them after smelling some of that breath, and uh, says ah, uh, and he'll drag his wine over to that side just to kind of indicate that he's trying to create some distance. So, uh, what's your name? And uh, you're friends with Sammy, huh? He says Jonathan's the name, and yes, yes, I'm, I'm a farmer locally, uh, you know, around around the town. I'm here most evenings. Um, you know, Sammy and I go go way back, um, and you know, I like I like to come here and 
you know, get warm by the fire. Although obviously it's, it's challenging as this continues to uh, deteriorate as against uh, everything Sammy's trying to do, but uh, I still enjoy the company and it's still pretty lively here. Provide you with some free drinks. You might want to bring some tools by and try to help them uh, keep this place from leaking. It's dripping all over in here. We're trying. We, we do our best, but just can't seem to stay ahead of it. So I was holding down control, thinking I was on push to talk. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Oxwell is going to, from his, from reading and writing and stuff like that, um, he's going to try to use that investigation and kind of looking around, maybe try to utilize some of the knowledge that he's had to look at the construction to see if it's just shoddy workmanship or or if it, it actually is fixed properly and there's just something else wrong here. So you look around and um, you, know, you don't need to roll. I mean, you do have experience. Um, and you, know, you, you can tell that the repairs seem to be um, of, of good quality. Um, so it looks like to you that there must be something else going on because the construction itself does not seem to be, be the cause. And as you're doing that, Sophia comes back and um, puts down the uh, the venison and um, and brings the the tray of drinks. And she goes, here, "Here you go, Father." And she says, "I know you won't want much more, but here's here's a little more wine for you." And and she gives the wine to the the father. And and she also comes and she says, "I don't I don't know how many of you there are, but we do have, you know, um, four four rooms." So and she kind of passes out a few keys to you all and says, "Upstairs." Um, these rooms are upstairs, and as you as you go up those stairs that you see, um, you see where Sven's, Sven's walking. You go upstairs and turn a little bit to the right, not the first room, but the next several rooms are are free and they're open. If if you all would like to uh, take your things up later and and stay the night, and she finishes um, passing passing things uh, around, and and she kind of smiles again, and she says, "I I do hope." I do hope you all see me uh, at the at the play this this evening. And um, as she does that, you you kind of you see Sammy take a, a bit of a a look over, and you see him kind of motion a little bit to Sophia, and she immediately puts her head back down, and walks back behind the bar, and they kind of they kind of walk back. In the, in the back and, and as they, they walk just a bit out of sight, but you, you all are certainly paying attention as they do. And, and you hear, you know, it's, it's, it's obvious you hear a, a loud slap and smack and muffled voices. And as soon as that happens, you see Sophia run out from behind the bar and up, up the stairs. And everyone else, you know, no one else seems to be too. Oh, no, that. I was just gonna say when when she hears the slap, as soon as she hears the slap, I think Margie just kind of takes her hand and like slides her teacup and saucer off onto the floor, so it crashes to the floor. Oh my! I am such a butterfingers. Uh, Mike has uh, set his glass down and is heading towards the kitchen. Um, I'll back up, Mike. Hold on. Okay. And Sven Sven comes running over, and and um, you know he's a he's tall, um, but he's he's um, very tall. He's thin, and he he's he talks very pretty quietly as well. But he says, I, "I'm sorry, Miss, and let me clean that up for you." And he starts uh, starts cleaning up the um, the glass that you had broken and. Sammy kind of, uh, he sees you come, come running up and around the corner. He looks at you all. Says, can I, can I help you all? Is there, is there something you need? Um, I, I'm going to ask him, you know, what I, I, we saw the marks. I heard you hollering. 
I heard a slap and her run out of here. What in the hell happened? And I'm, I, I'm doing the old thing where I'm, I'm rolling up my sleeves and, and I'm, I'm pissed. Okay. Give me, um, I would say that's probably um, maybe manipulation as you're trying to either get him, you know, to influence or, um, yeah, yeah, give me an manipulation. Uh, Ooh, two sixes. All right. Um, so he, it, at first, he, he like, you know, pushes out his chest and you can tell that he's, He's used to being the dominant one and, and he's used to uh, getting his way and he, and he kind of kind of looks at you and there's something in your eyes that just make him think twice. And he kind of takes out a, a big sigh and he, and he says, you know, ever since, ever since my wife Nora is gone, I want, I want nothing but, but my daughter to take over this in, you know, Daughters and, and, and kids, they, they need to have purpose. And, and having, you know, art, having interest in art, in the, in the occult, and in all the things that, that, that my, my wife was interested in, it's just, it's not going to lead to anything positive. She needs to learn. And as the only way kids learn at times is, is this a firm, strong hand. I'm going to tell them, listen. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to gather myself a little bit and I'm gonna say you put your hands on her again. My doctor friend out there is gonna do bad things to you in your sleep. And then I'm gonna turn and, and walk out uh, back towards the table. And he, and he looks like he wants to say something and he, he thinks twice about it and he he, he just kind of turns around mumbling a little bit to himself, but he just, he stays quiet and stays there. When, when, uh, when Mike hears a mumbling, he's going to stop and kind of turn around and, and give him that look about, are you sure you want to keep this going? And he just, he sees you and then immediately kind of looks down and, and doesn't, doesn't say anything more. And then, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Pat, uh, Pat Rasm Rast moose on the on the shoulder and and then just kind of head back to the table and enjoy my food. Raz is definitely a little sad he didn't get to break out the walking stick, but seeing that the situation's been diffused, he'll he'll return to the table as well. Um, and Sven, in the meantime, is is uh, cleaning up the the glasses and he looks at you, Margit, and and says, "Can I, can I give you something else? Uh, was that?" tea with uh was it a splash of, of bourbon i apologize I, I should have been listening but what what was in your tea well, you should have and yes you can a hot tea of black with rum yes yes ma'am yes ma'am and I motion over sven after uh Mar 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 gives him his order him okay order, yes and he comes by and yeah, yes can i help you uh just a quick question does he slap you when you mess up or just his daughter and um, yeah, give me, I would say again, give me a, a manipulation or yeah, if there's anything else you can think of that would be appropriate. But otherwise, I would say give me a manipulation roll. I'll go ahead. Yeah, roll manipulation. Much as I'd love to push it, I won't, won't push it just to <laughs> hassle the and, and all he's all he says um, is uh, he says, um, he, he doesn't really answer your question directly, but he says, Sophia, she, she does, ever since her, her mother uh, left, um, she does now retreat to the, to the attic very, very often. Um, and, and, and with that, he kind of almost immediately turns away and, and goes to, uh, to get the, uh, to refill the drinks. And, uh, and he quickly bustles off back around behind the bar. And um, Malte, are you uh, are you heading up uh, the stairs? Are you looking to? I'm gonna go check on her because uh, she sounded like she was upset and moved pretty quickly up, like she was hurt. Maybe just check and see if she's okay. And okay. Uh, 
maybe uh, talk to her about her uh, play that she's planning in the attic. She's up in the attic. Okay. Um, so as you follow her up, and I'm going to leave the map where it is for now, but um, as you follow her up into, um, you know, she does get upstairs to the second floor and she she moves forward and she's just about to go up a ladder that looks like it, it goes up into the attic. It's kind of attached at the far end. And she she turns to, to you and, and as you um as you asked her ask her about the uh the attic, she is she's really excited and she's like she she doesn't she keeps her right side from you. She kind of only turns her left cheek towards you and, and she talks to you and and she says, you know, if if you'd like to to come the the uh, I, I'd love to to start the place soon. Um would your friends like to come too? And she has almost a, you know, like a, a hopeful look in her eye that she's she's hoping she can get a good crowd that would would come here. And she says, if 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 you would, um, can you bring them too? And and she almost doesn't stop for your your answer. She kind of keeps going towards the the ladder, and and you see her retreat up uh, into uh, into the attic. Okay, I just acknowledge uh, that and. What time does she walk up the ladder? She, she says, have, if, if they can uh, finish, have them finish their drinks and I, I have a, a few more preparations and then I will uh, absolutely, we'll, we'll be ready. We'll be ready. Sure, and I'll see if my friends want, would like to join us. And I'll mosey back down over to the table and kind of share, uh, maybe we can be supportive. Uh, her play that she's running tonight up in the attic, even though her father seems to be very discouraging of that type of uh, activity for her. But uh, that's one way we can get back at him. I think it'd be the least we could do given just experience. And Jonathan, Jonathan kind of unsteadily gets up uh, on his on his feet and he's kind of walking over uh, to the to the corner here um and he kind of walks by you malta who was uh, sitting up with him um and he he kind of you know again he kind of looks around a little bit furtively and and he and he says to you he says nora has been gone for for a while now and because I, I appreciate you coming by and, and talking with me not many do and he says Ever since Nora's been gone, her room, Sammy always keeps it locked. I don't understand why, but he always keeps it locked. Um, just, just thought you might be interested. And he kind of keeps, almost does it almost like a drive-by so that uh, it's not obvious that he's sitting there talking with you. And he kind of goes back behind the stairs where it appears to be a, a restroom behind the stairs that he's just going to, to uh, take care of some business before he goes back to his next drink. I think I'll uh, multi. I'll move on over to Olas, who is our local investigator, and might uh, share some of the information we've gathered with him, and see if he has any uh, suggestions or ideas. Okay. Um, and as as you do that, as you walk over to uh, Olas, um, and <clears throat> you get kind of closer to him, and at first you think it's just a trick of the uh, of the of the light. Um, but you, you all notice that, um, the lights seem to be going a bit dim and they're taking on a bluish color and the room is just growing super, super dark. And Malti, as you get close, like you get right up to Olas and, and literally as you get up to him, he falls where he's standing and he is dead asleep. And as those of you are looking at, at father Clared, as he's, he's kind of in the middle of drinking his glass of wine and he's looks like he's just about to say something and his, his grip just slips on his glass of wine and it crashes to the floor and he does the face plant like right into his, his plate of food falling dead asleep. 
And as you, Rasmus, you kind of are looking up or actually, you know, you all kind of look up to, to the, the woman that's sitting in the table by herself and the same thing. Everyone seems to be, uh, seems to have fallen asleep, but Sammy, except for Sammy, is still behind the bar. Give me one second. What about uh, Sven? Does he fall asleep? Sven, Sven is asleep as well. I'm going to look at, uh, is it Margit? Yep. And, and I, what? You're the doctor here. What do you make of that? Well, she'll kind of look around the room and she'll walk over to the end of the bar where Sven had her tea on the tray he was going to use to carry it over. And she'll pick up her teacup and she'll take a, a sip of it. Sudden onset of narcolepsy? I don't know. Mass narcolepsy? <laughs> Michael will pull out his little notebook and jot some notes down and stick it back inside his coat. Uh, do we think this is uh, something to do with the vest? Uh, I, I have a little bit of experience seeing them in the woods occasionally, and I, I avoid them at all costs, but <clears throat> is this type of thing uh, typical when they're in the area? Um, so as you're doing that, um, you, I'll, I'll let you do that. But as, as all of the, the lights dim and everyone's falling asleep in front of you, I need everyone to give me a fear test. So what that means is you can use either, um, empathy or logic, either one of them. And if you have anything that you can add to it for any reason you can, but um, you're you're trying to get um, at least one six. So use empathy or logic. Empathy or logic. And if you have something in your, uh, you know, if there's anything you can use in your talents or anything else. And actually, I'm sorry, for each of you, since all of you are together, you can add each of you can add uh, three dice um, because you're all together. You get to add one dice for each character that's with you. So once you've added those three, three, yeah, just take, yep, take the three modifier and you can just click that once and it'll add it. And tell me if everyone gets a six or if anyone does not get a six. Um, I got three sixes. Okay. I got one six. All right. So what about uh, Malte and Rasmus? Sorry, Rasmus, you're on mute. I can hear him. Oh, oh, that's so weird. I can't hear him. Rasmus is uh, is odd. I can't hear anything. I can hear you guys just fine. Um, that is odd. His his icon shows that he's on mute. Rasmus says that he didn't get anything. Okay. Alti did get a couple sixes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now you're fine. Yeah, that's so weird. Awesome. I just rejoined the room. I don't know what was going on. So, uh, Rasmus, if you didn't get a six, so this is one you can push. You don't have to, but tell me whether or not you'd like to push. And um, if not, yeah, just let me know either way. Looks like Gwydion just dumped there is Gwydion. He oh, are you? oh, really? That's weird. I'm not seeing this. So, so Rasmus, I'm sorry. Do you want to push or no? No, I was trying to ask what happens if I fail. Sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. Um, so if you're if you fail, you become terrified, and we would roll a d6 um, to see how many rounds. And you have a couple options when you're terrified. You will suffer. Um, a mental condition. So no matter what, you're going to suffer. Um, if you don't, uh, you will suffer a mental condition and then you will you will have to take one to six rounds, either kind of, you get to choose fleeing, attacking anybody that is uh, a threat to you or basically kind of freeze or faint on the spot. Gotcha. Could I attack anybody that's a threat to me? Yeah, it's, it's only so... So if there if there's no one there that's a threat, but so you might have to pick the one of the others. Um, 
from just a role playing standpoint, but yeah, it's just somebody that's threatening you. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I would like to. I'm gonna go ahead and push it then. Okay. So just roll the same uh, roll, and you can you can do all the same dice. Okay. Logic, and then a modifier plus three. I got a six. That's awesome. Okay. That makes it so. I just when you push something you get a condition correct of your choosing so you yep so you get to you can choose and it would be mental in this case so you can choose any of the mental conditions to uh, tick off and now um from now on any anything you roll that is tied to logic or empathy you're gonna have to take one a minus one that's it just one less die so i'll show you how to do that um, if it comes up so everyone else you kind of you shake this this feeling off um, and in the meantime, so, uh, I would say, uh, Malte, why don't you give me, uh, maybe it's a, it's probably a learning role. If, um, yeah, it's probably a learning role that I would say that you would try to make, uh, if you want to kind of understand if you think it's maybe Vasen related. Let me, uh, do a learning role here. Yeah, nothing. Okay. All right. I mean, you certainly, I, I would say in general, you, you know that there are some type of Vassin, um, you know, there, uh, you can't think of, of which at the moment, but you know that there are some that certainly could cause something like this, but you don't have any, you know, specific recollection of, of what could be, could be causing this. All right, what does everyone want to do? You guys are obviously, um, you know, not asleep and uh, Sammy is still awake and um, obviously um, Sophia retreated upstairs. So Rasmus, you're like freaking out right now. You're having a... That's what I'm trying to figure out. If Rasmus is freaking out, he, I'm going to choose angry and I'm just going to start marching over towards Sammy and I'm just going to get up in his face and yell at him and say, did you put something in the food? You think this is a joke? And I'll start, I'll grab him and, you know, start shaking him. Okay. Um, He's so, kind of like losing sight of logic and, you know, kind of just yeah. accusing him of doing something to us and the patrons. So. 100%. And so as you, as you do that, I mean, Sammy doesn't even really try to, um, he doesn't really try to resist you. And you can tell he's just, he's white. He, he's um, all the color has, has come out of his face um, and he is just visibly shaken as he's looking around and, and seeing everybody fall asleep. And, and you can just, you can kind of hear him mumbling. He's not saying anything directly to you. He's just mumbling to himself. And he just he keeps saying like, Nora, Nora, it's, it, it must be my, my fault. Just I, I'm being, I'm, I'm being punished. And he just, he keeps shaking his head and he's just almost going limp as you're shaking him. He just, he's not, not fighting you at all. Yeah. I'll just shove him off and I'll just like sigh and I'll just be like, yeah, yeah, buddy, make it all about you. Huh? And there's some like sack of grain back here and he just kind of collapses back on the sack of grain. And he just, he's just kind of sits himself up a bit and he's just, he's just sobbing and he's, his, his hands are, or his face or in his hands and he just, crying it just what 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 have i done and you you do see him oh go ahead sorry go ahead no, um, say Marjeet, who's still standing at the end of the thing where she picked up the the tea she takes a long like but she makes it overly loud and obnoxious kind of sip of her tea well he proved to be about as useless as i anticipated he would be Oh, uh, I hit his daughter and then took a nap, huh? Ugh, he hit his daughter and then cried about how hard his life is. <laughs> he just collapsed because he's afraid. 
he's like crying and stuff. He's having a breakdown. Yeah, he's like blubbering about his uh his wife. Balti's gonna look over. I know Olas is also a Thursday child. Um, he didn't fall asleep, did he? Wait, uh, everyone except for Sammy, except for Sammy and and you all. Okay. So Olas is is asleep as well. Yep. Well, I mean, did anyone here eat the food? Uh, yeah, Mike's gonna nod that he did. Do you feel tired? Do you feel no, nauseated? Not, not really. Are you breaking um, out in a sweat? Uh, I kind of smell under my arms a little bit. No, not not that I can tell. No more than usual, I guess. Well, I, the most I, mean, likely I, I guess I, I am a little damp, but it might be from this damn ceiling, for all I know. Ugh, if our rooms are like this, I'm going to be so disgusted. I don't really know what else we should do. Um, I guess you... she'll kind of look around the room and do an investigation? And see, you, did you check them for pulses? Is isn't that what uh, a doctor would do? Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose I should, huh? <laughs> she'll like she still has her tea in her hand. She walks over to uh, Jonathan, where he kind of collapsed on the table, and she'll she'll like reach, like she'll set her teacup on the saucer and hold it in one hand while she reaches down with a with a gloved like a white gloved hand, and she'll put it on his neck and feel for a pulse. Okay. And, and it, it takes you a bit. At first, you're kind of wondering. Um, but after a bit, you, you do uh, feel a faint, faint pulse and, you know, kind of a shallow but regular breathing. Um, and yeah, so he, he definitely seems uh, alive, but um, certainly fast asleep. Yeah, she'll uh, kind of turn back to the room and take her tea and take another sip. Well, they're not dead. And you said Sammy's passed out, is that right? Oh, no, he's just sitting in this grain with his, like, head in his hand, sitting on a sack behind the bar, but no. No, he's, he's, uh, he's awake. So aside from the blue lights in here, I guess it would be an investigation roll then. I'm just looking for anything else that looks like it would be something that could have caused it, or is there a certain part of the room that's not turned colors or I don't know. Nope. Like a weird spirit hanging out in a corner somewhere. You don't. Um, no, you don't notice anything else other than the odd. I mean, you all can feel certainly that it, it's taken a few minutes, but all the heat has gone out of the room. Now the, the hearths are still glowing with an, an eerie like blue. The flames are glowing more bluish now, but you don't feel any heat. In the, in the room anymore. And as the rain continues to come in, it's getting cooler and colder in the room. I want to ask Malty if he would mind going upstairs and checking on uh, Sammy's daughter. Yeah, that's what I was playing that for. Uh, and I am going to check that first door that she told us uh, is not open to see if it's locked, if that's the room that uh, Jonathan told me about. Uh, that Nora was locked away in, possibly. Okay. Um, so, so I know it's just you going up there, but um, I'm going to show the uh, second floor. I won't put all the tokens on for now, but um, so you come up to the uh, second floor, and as you as you come up the stairs, which are um, kind of right over here. Um, where that little squiggle is, you, um, what, what Jonathan seemed to tell you, sorry, I'm trying to move the map around. You guys can't see it, but the stream can, um, get rid of this. The, um, the room is the, the one, what's that? I just lost the map. Oh, did you? Weird. Um, I think I, sh did you guys still see it at the rest yeah, of you? Okay, good. Um, I wonder if it's just, uh, yeah, something going on at the table, but the room, as soon as you walk up to the top seems to be 
the room that um, he's referring to, and you can see a door right up here. Okay, I will go over and just see if it's locked. Okay, so and quietly, you know, I'm not, not banging on it or anything. And it it is locked. It is locked. All right, considering the dire circumstances where light is gone and we're getting cold and wet, uh, I'm going to lay a shoulder into this door and see if uh, anybody in there needs some help. You're going to lay a shoulder into it. Okay. Um, so let's do this. Um, give me a force check. So, and, and it's, yeah, just give me a, a force check while you're doing that. And is everybody else for the moment staying down on the main level? Or you can tell me if anything you're, it looks like uh, Schmo had to maybe get back on the table. So we'll wait for him for a second. All right, I'll wait until he comes back. And I will try, I will use my advantage on this goal. Well, uh, what's your advantage give you? Can you tell me a little bit? Are you going to like use your rifle or like rifle butt or something to... Okay. And sorry, Rasmus, you were going to say something while he is um, trying to bust down the door? Yeah, I was just going to say I'd, I'd probably follow him up okay. make sure, uh, you know, he wasn't alone after this happened. You know, at least groups of two, right? Yeah, for sure. Never split the party. I was going to say. Um... <laughs> so on uh, to roll the force uh, in order to use the advantage, how do I... Uh... You'd probably have to do like a close combat and, and then you can, um, then you can add the advantage. You should be able to just click that advantage button and it should add the dice. Make sure you can see the dice being added, but, um, it should. All right. All right. I'll, uh, click on the advantage. These are up there. Uh, Schmo, what would, um, would you, oh, actually I probably did the wrong character. Um, what would you, would you uh, be upstairs, downstairs? Are you and Margie both going to stay downstairs for the moment? Or are you? Um, I, I would follow Rasmus. Okay. Yeah, she's going to, as soon as she sees everybody going up, she's going to go up too. She's just going to kind of look at Sam with a disgusted grimace and then walk up the stairs. Okay. And as he sees Rasmus coming up the stairs, he gets encouraged and uh, takes a big wind up with his rifle and slams down on the, the lock on the door and he gets a couple sixes yes okay so um as you put your shoulder into the into the door the room uh, or the door bursts open off the hinges it's kind of like maybe the rest of the um the inn it, it was locked but at the same time it just was um you know it, the hinges were a, a little rusty and you are able to, uh, yeah, to open open the uh, the room. And as you look into the room, um, you see a bed in the far corner, a desk, uh, a closet. You also see a uh, kind of a relatively large bookcase. And there's a large number of paintings that are are on the wall, and um, everything is covered in like a, a layer of of dust. Say, hey, uh, I'm good out in the forest. Uh, does anybody have any skills at uh, determining what's going on in here and how long it's been uh, in disarray like this? Rasmus will uh, present his crowbar and say, well, you kind of did what I intended to. That's one way of knocking a door off its hinges. And so uh, is, is everyone kind of are you guys going in the room? Are you kind of stay, hanging outside? What's what's and you guys can move your tokens freely and whatever you want to do. Just you know, make sure somebody's looking at the staircase. I think. Um. Yeah, Mergy will walk in and kind of start to just eyeball the room very, very closely and. Um, see if she can figure anything out does 
Is there even any area that doesn't have dust? Is there anything that looks like, like a journal of some sort? So, yeah. So as you're... The paintings, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So as you're doing that, give me um, an observation roll, if you would. Observation. and you said it's dark in here right uh it's it's there's a little bit of that bluish light so it's a little dark yeah it's that same uh all the lamps have that same bluish light as you see on the map as they did downstairs okay can i uh add my equipment thing that i added can i add a bonus for that my if... little light thing? can i put that on and turn the light on on it or do, is the light blue <gasps> is the light on that blue Yes, the light is blue. What? So it's all like very, you know, the, the, and these are all like oil lamps, if you can imagine. Um, right. So yeah. My little headlight thing, my little goggly headlight equipment, that, that light's blue too? Yes, it is. That's creepy. Um, okay, so. So yeah, you can add, if you think that's, um, if that's something, if that ties into your observation, yeah, I'd let you. I'd let you add whatever, uh, if you get like a plus one or plus two, go for it. Ooh, okay, cool. Let's see if that works. I get nothing. Okay, do me a favor and look in your um, private chat on Discord, please. Oh, okay. Um, and the rest of you are kind of seeing her walk in and like look around the look around the room um, and I'll let her explain. Uh, Mike would yeah. walk in as well and okay. immediately try to find a stack of books or something and try to try to start thumbing through them. Great. So would that be an investigation? Yeah, you can uh, actually, I mean, you don't even have to, at least for the moment, do an investigation. So as you're looking, um, you you do see you see a journal, you see all sorts of books. Um, there seem to be all kinds of books on the occult, um, and you do see kind of on the on the dresser, um, you see um, what appears to be uh, a journal of of someone that was living in the room. I'm gonna pick it up and start reading it. Okay. And as you open it, um, Margit, what are you what are you doing? Um, she puts her little goggles on, like goggle thing on, and she lights it up, and she sees it like the light coming off is blue, and she's like, "Well, that is just that is just appropriate." I just oh, look at this. You just rammed the door down she just didn't even try to look for a key and she turns on Malta and she uh, pulls out um, well she just she doesn't have a weapon but she pulls out like she turns on Malta she says it's you it's always been you hasn't it and she's gonna slap him across the face as hard as she can okay give give me a, uh, a force roll against uh, Malta for a, a for a moment that under skills uh force is should be yeah one of uh the first skills i believe oh i got a success okay um Excellent. so malta you can and uh, we haven't really been in the combat completely but there's a fast turn and a slow turn so it's a little bit like a reaction in fifth edition you can use your agility to try to like parry or dodge um, if you'd like, uh, before you get this, take this hit. And if you do, then go ahead and roll your agility to try to kind of get out of the way of this. So, I mean, you catch your hand and I go, Whoa, whoa, doc, what's up? I'm your buddy. What are you doing? She turns, buddy. I don't think so. And when you look at her and she makes eye contact with you finally, you see that like the it's almost 
like her eyes, the, the colored part of her eyes, which are usually this kind of bright blue color, they've, um, they've gone almost completely black, it looks like, and it looks like there's, like, black where the standard blood veins would be. They're all black, and there seems to be some kind of, almost in the shape of, like, the crow's feet lines that are around her face, um, being in her mid-40s are just little lines of blackness that are kind of seeping out into it. And they eventually are fading into a blue color that's similar to the lights in the room. Oh, what? What is going on? Anybody else seeing this? This is wild. Poor Doc. Uh, can... All right, go ahead. Away from her she's uh, turning into Ha! Back away! It's because you're a coward. You just run around and break everything. Do whatever you want. And then when confronted, you run! And she kind of takes another step forward. Take it easy. Take it easy. So Mike, are you, as you're seeing this, do you want to pop open the journal and read the journal? Or what do you, what do you want to do? Yeah, Mike's looking at the journal slowly stepping away from Mungi. The, um, this is going to take just a bit, but I'm going to play you as this journal is read and I'm going to share it with you guys too, but I'm going to play the audio so everyone can hear it. And then maybe after this, if you guys want, we can take just a five minute break if anybody needs a bio break. Um, so I'm going to play the reading of Nora's journal and I'll also share it with you. So here we go. January 15th. I saw it again last night as I was on my way to empty the Widow Arutka's chamber pot. The candle in my hand went out, and standing still in the dark corridor on the second floor, I could hear the floorboards move. Someone was walking toward me. I whispered my husband's name, and an unknown voice responded with a word I couldn't understand. The hairs on my arms stood up and the blood throbbed in my veins. Finally I dropped the pot and ran downstairs. My footsteps woke several of the guests. I had to spend more than an hour on my knees, scrubbing the stench of Rutgers excrement off the floorboards. Sami was angry. I didn't tell him I'd seen a ghost, it would be adding fuel to the fire. January 17th. Do I really have myself to blame? I know what I did to Sami, but that was almost 20 years ago. He gets so different when he's angry, and I go mute with fear whilst he demands answers. Perhaps I should know better than to upset him. But all I did was suggest that the sudden falling apart of the inn might have occult causes. I definitely shouldn't have mentioned the ghost. Now I won't be able to show myself to the guests for a week. The bruises around my neck can be concealed with a collar, and no one can see the pain in my chest and stomach but my left eye is purple like a plum, and my nose is swollen. I fear for Sophia. She is so much like me, and I'd like to tell her everything, but I'm afraid of what Sami would say. He wants to eradicate all things artistic and sublime from his daughter's body, that which came from me. January 31st. I mentioned my nightmares to Sophia, and it turned out she's been having the same dreams. A man being killed, the murderer sneaking up behind him and cutting his throat with a knife. The body is buried in unconsecrated ground, and suddenly it is my body in the grave. I've been buried alive and can't get out. All I want is revenge, or peace in death. I wake with a scream. February 7th. The fourth time I saw him I understood what he was whispering. It's not a word, but a name. Piri. After spending several days pondering the matter, to Sammy's great annoyance, I remembered where I'd heard that name. Sammy's grandfather, who used to run this inn, was named Piri Hajala. There are lots of old letters in the attic. Among them I found a stack of messages all signed with Piri's name, written in code and addressed to someone in Uppsala. The code was easily deciphered, and now I've shut myself away in my room all morning, reading Piri's love letters. Sami is furious that I've neglected my duties. He is banging the kitchen walls and throwing saucepans against the floor. Poor Ingalai. 
February 8. I now know who the dead man is. Piri writes of his guilt and feelings of remorse over a murder he committed. He killed a man named Oscar Hort by slitting his throat. This happened during a meeting with three people from Uppsala. One of them was named Albert. Oscar was unwilling to cooperate, but what he was meant to do I am unsure of. They buried his body somewhere in our garden. Piri says that, instead of having a priest consecrate the ground, they desecrated his body with magic. He fears that he has damned the inn and condemned himself to hell. March 1st. Sophia has been quiet and withdrawn for some time now. I sat down to talk with her, and she told me that she dreams of setting up a theatre. She wants to put on shows here at the Witch Cat. I think it's a brilliant idea. I have sent an invitation to the Troll Dreams Theatre Troupe, mostly to attract customers, but also to inspire Sophia. They will pass through here in early April. This time, I won't let Sami get his way. March 19. Sami saw the letter from the theatre director, and as I'm writing this I have hit in the stable like a naughty child. He hit me with the fireplace poker, everything went black and I woke up on the floor. I lost the feeling in the fingers of my left hand, and they are still numb. Blood, saliva, snot and tears are running down my face, so I need to keep this paper away from my body to avoid staining it. I'm so scared. April 3rd. If I stay here he'll kill me. Tonight I'm packing my things, and I'm taking Piri's letters with me. I'll show them to Sophia when I come for her. Perhaps we will return to the witch cat one day, when Sami has died or come to his senses. Then we can go looking for ghosts together. All right. Um, so before we go in the rest of this, let's, uh, you guys give up like a five minute break. I know we're trying to wrap it maybe within the hour or so. So five minutes good for everybody. Yeah, will right. that be shared in uh, the Lore Keeper like the other? It is. It's it's actually there. If you go into um, Nora's room, and you should actually. I wonder if I didn't save. No. If you look at journal, reading okay, it, it, it's there. Uh, you have to yeah, expand the in and then her room. And then scroll all the way down, and then it'll it's in better type font so that you can see it. So, all right, let's take five, and you will continue. And if you uh, if you oh. click on your character sheets uh, to the right of your picture, the three little dots. Um, if it says "Make Private," if you check it to make it public, yeah. your picture should show up next to your name. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't realize. Oh, that's think, how you did it. Yeah. All right. So, stream uh, those watching. Thanks for watching. I'm going to put on the "Be Right Back" screen, and I won't do a countdown timer, but we'll do like five minutes, guys. Thank you. Okay. All right. Be right back. All right. Good.
this is fun. Uh, yeah, it's kind of different. It's yeah, I like it. Yeah, it is. But, I like it. Um, I hope that was okay. You said that to me. I was like, oh shit. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, so, oh yeah. The way you did was great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, um, you know, we don't have to stop it. Like, we don't have to dead stop at midnight. Well. I just don't want to be up until like no, two, three. You know I totally I mean? get it. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to. Yeah. I don't think it'll be. So, uh, I mean, if we go like a half hour pass okay. or whatever, I'm fine with it. Like, okay. I don't feel like it's a hard set thing. I just don't want to be up. No, I get it. I, I want to respect every. Yeah. Comes midnight your early. time or midnight Gwydion time? <laughs> Not my time. <laughs> now, are you. I, I'm on Eastern. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there's. Yeah. We should be. Yeah, we should be. I think I think hour, hour and a half. I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's just uh I Sunday mornings is my go to trainer. Totally. Mornings. No, that's great. So, and I am not a morning person, so I don't work out well in the mornings. It's actually like the worst time of day for me to work out. Gotcha. But it's the only time my trainer has free, so that's what time we go. So Gotcha. No, I hear you. No, do you have any uh, any bourbon tonight or no? Nice. Yeah, he's a, yep. That's good. I've been been drinking a lot of water. I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, I poured myself a lip. Poured myself just a little. No. Poured myself ju just a little, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let it sit here and probably drink it at the end. I don't want to drink it while we're playing. Uh, Johnny Blue. So just have a little bit. All right, we'll get Rasmus back and then we can get start. It's on turn the stream. Anybody watching on uh YouTube or live? Thanks again. It's been it's been fun. It's been different. So did you see my DM Gwydion? Oh no, sorry, let me look for it. I did not look for it. No worries. Ah, gotcha. A message on Twitch earlier. Somebody calling me a hat, hot dad wanting to chat on Twitter. I was like, uh, that's kind of weird. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so now the, the spam has made its way to Twitch chat. Oh, that's funny. I love it. All right. So let me share. Let's get back to the. We'll share the map again for now. I think it should keep so, showing. Reading this journal, um, yeah, I don't know that I would have made it all the way through it. Sure. Um, so I would have stormed as soon as I got to where he was putting his hands on his wife. I would have stormed past Doc, um, kind of tossed her the book a little bit, and uh, uh, walked out of the door. Gave. Um, Rasmus kind of a uh, let's go tap on the shoulder and I'm I'm going to go downstairs and attempt to beat the shit out of this guy. Okay. And um do me a favor anybody that does want to that's staying up in the room while you're walking downstairs um uh Mike, sorry I was looking for your name. Um anybody that's still in there and and is kind of looking around and still um kind of listen to the journal or read the journal. Give me a learning role if you would. Um, so I would think that probably right before he, like when he gets to that part where he does that and as he's walking out, um, Marjit's taking like a step or two closer to um, Malta to like looking like she's about to go after him again. And then she kind of just looks at him and 
all the black lines like disappear out of her eyes and her eyes go back to this normal like blue color that they usually are and she kind of like shakes her head and well this seems to be useless it's a dusty old room <laughs> that was a little spooky do you know what happened um, excuse me I went into the room and there's nothing there. It, I mean, it's, I guess it's spooky, it's dusty, and hasn't been touched in a while. Some weird shrine to his. And probably at that time, he walks by with the book and, like, tosses it at her. And she, like, what? And catches it. I'll, uh, I'll lean over to Malte and I'll say, say I, I think there's a word for what's going on right here. It's like gas or lighting or some a combination of the two. But, uh, Doc, when you put on those goggles, you got pissed. My my gog No, I I like my goggles. They're very, very they're very helpful to me whenever I'm doing anything that requires me to see in either a darkened area or something that needs more attention to detail. They're quite handy tool to have, and she kind of taps them a little bit. Oh, I should turn the light off. And they help you slap people? <laughs> slap people? <laughs> well, no. They're for digging around in cadavers and the like. Guess it's neither here nor there. Malte's all right. Mike, while they're doing while they're doing the schmo, take a look at your uh, your channel DM in uh, Discord while they're doing this upstairs. So I did roll a learning and I did get a six. Uh, so okay. That I uh, spot that was missed. You get uh, you got uh, a six. You got one six or how many sixes did you get? Just just one. Okay. Um. So you know that uh, this must be the work of a revenant. And, you know, a revenant is a, a haunted spirit filled by hate against those that have wronged it in life. The revenant is often invisible, but it is known to take the shape of a monstrous being with sharp teeth and claws. Um, and Rasmus, do me a favor and look at your private messages when you have a second. Your private channel, I should say. So Mike's gonna come back upstairs after a minute and kind of, well, somebody took care of the problem for us. Uh, Doc, do you mind if I have the book back so I can finish reading? I apologize for my abrupt uh, exit. And she uh, looks over to you and hands it to you, and she just, of course, dear, of course. I mean, well, you can have it, of course. And she hands it over to you. So I, I go, uh, Mike goes back to reading it. She goes, oh, I forgot about Sophia. So he's going to work, run over to the ladder to check on her and climb up in the attic. Okay. So what's uh so what are the rest of you doing as uh, Malte climbs up into the attic? I'm sorry. What made it clear um what we were dealing with was it the journal that uh It's kind of a, a combination of the journal and there's also as you guys are looking through the room there's a a stack of occult books in the room. And um and just it, it kind of triggers Malte's memory um he couldn't really place some of the things before as he, as she was thinking about uh what could be causing like the blue lighting and some of those types of things but as she was able to uh look through the occult books she realized that um this must be what what they're dealing with and you actually even for those interested you see a um a page that i think is is probably something that some of you have seen before, but not all of you. But you actually, in one of the occult books, and you're going to have to minimize this a little bit, but you see this entry in a book. It's kind of a book about Vasen that are also known as gas, or um, I think another word is Draugr. I'll... Um... I'll explain to uh, the two that are still with me that uh, so the revenant that cursed me. 
my thinking's right, we ought to try and find the remains and probably going to have to bury them, give them a, a rightful burial. Was there anything in the that journal about the body? As I'm okay. Schmo's reading through it, um, yes, I I believe it, it. It did mention something about somebody being murdered and and buried and and magic, uh, something of the likes. Uh, but I uh, here here, Doc, and I kind of point out to where it talks about them burying the body and stuff uh, and hand it over. Uh, to Margie. Um, as she's kind of skimming this book, she goes, but, well, I don't mean to alarm anyone, but that lovely woman downstairs that I was talking to, she's been having these dreams. Her throat being slit, her best friend burying her alive. Yes, well, there's obviously, definitely, this is tied to that somehow. I wonder why she's been picked. So Malte, um, you're up. Uh, I don't know if the rest of the folks are going to stay down for now, but you're up and, you know, Sophia is up and you can kind of see her. She's, she comes out from behind the partition and she sees you and, and she's uh, smiling, like, come, come. Are, are your friends coming? It's uh, the play. I, I'm I'm ready to to start the play. I'm just just finishing. Can we can we please start? I've been waiting for so long. I say, hold on, Sophia. And there's the blue light in up here too, right? All the lights are bluish. They are. Yeah, they are. And and have you have you noticed the change in the lighting? Everything's blue. Does it look blue to you? He says, "Yes, I, I have noticed it. It is. It's gotten colder, and, it, and it's it's blue. But I've just been I've been waiting so long to for for my play for everyone to see it. See how nice. See how everything is 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 just set and and ready to go. I mean, they, my preparations have taken me taken me forever. And I mean, you see, you know, there's boxes and stacks of books everywhere. But um, you see this clockwork mechanisms and." And she certainly seems uh, prepared to uh, to start this this play for you. Okay, uh, I would ask you uh, to come down uh, from the attic and meet with my friends. They may you may be able to persuade them to come to see your uh, your uh, play, but uh, please follow me. And I head back to the ladder. And and as you. As you head back to the uh, the ladder, um, coming up from the bottom of the ladder, and it, it almost appears as you're just about to step from the bottom of the ladder, you see this creature um, that looks like this, with long claws, and it's just it's an ethereal creature, and it comes flying up through you and as it does so i need you to um you know it it howls and it launches itself through you and if you can give me a fear test please oh it does that that would be uh, logic for me if that's you can do logic or empathy yep either one all right find that again on the scrolly scrolly there it is Come on, nothing. A uh, couple threes and a couple ones. Would you like to push your roll? Don't have to. I will do so. Just re roll again. Yep. This is going to cost me, but it's worth it. Yes, a couple sixes. That's good because you needed two. So um, you do take a, a mental condition, um, which you can decide, um, you know, which one would come into play based on, on what just happened to you. 
Um, so you take a metal condition, but you do otherwise shake off um, the uh, the effects, and um, and as as that happens, it kind of immediately it goes towards the back of the room and vanishes, and it just seems to dissolve in the middle of the attic. And is Sophia safe? As she's is she, she is. Only... Yep. Okay. She seems a little dazed and Can I tell she, she saw it or no? Um, you don't think that she saw it. I mean, she noticed something. I mean, like it's almost like she felt some gust or something as she as it moved past her, but um, but no, you don't think that um she saw or noticed it. So I'll go, come, come, let's go. And I go down the ladder and I think she's falling, and I run over to the team and I say, Hey, crazy ghost just flew right through me i am pissed this thing is just dominating this place i don't like it what are we gonna do i don't think uh the kids saw it so it might be a best best passing it's marked out in, res in response to malta that uh we have to bury its remains the, it's, uh, a movement. it's it's what the same sort of thing that similar that cursed me it's why i'm here right now while this is going on, um, I would imagine I'd be kind of next to uh, uh, the doc kind of going over the journal and I would kind of stop and go, huh, you see, you see this thing here, doc, uh, Pyre, I think it is. Um, it's written on the, the dead man downstairs that I saw. Um, it's kind of odd, don't you think? Yes, I mean, just, I just, I just, I, yes, I mean, obviously that's, that's very odd. Words and journals being written on dead people. And yes, I'd say that that is odd. And, and Sophia kind of overhears you as she's coming down with Malte and says, yeah, dead? Who, who's dead? Uh, kind of look at better and just kind of coldly without kind of any kind of emotion. Uh, uh, your, your father has dead. Uh, it appears that he uh, took his own life downstairs and kind of go back to the book and it's like, do you see this here uh, where it shows that um, this man Oscar is dead. I didn't we see an Oscar downstairs? And she and you're doing that and you're going back and doing your own thing. She's just wailing and drops to the floor and just is just sobbing. I think Brigitte would kind of oh now I I know he's your father, but really you're really just better off, dear. Buck up. Wow, give me give me maybe a a, a manipulation roll, if you would. Um Um Elbow Rams Ramus and say, I think your eyes are gonna turn black again. Um manipulation. Let's just hope she goes after this. Yeah, manipulation. It's probably towards the bottom of your skills. Oh, there it is. They're not in alphabetical order. That no, it's like it's, it's by fire. yeah. By yeah, I get it. It's by group. By uh, yeah. Um. Oh, I gotta clear my old rolls from before. Hold on one second. Okay, so do I get to add my empathy into it? Um. That, like, how's that work? Well, it should. Or is it tied it'll. On, oh, it's automatically tied. To it does. Empathy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh yeah i don't have good bedside manner in case you guys haven't figured that out yet <laughs> no it's hey. um, i do not succeed at that yeah. she just she continues to to sob and and she just kind of looks at you and like he he was still my father for all for all his faults and she just kind of stays there sobbing All right, 
it. So sorry if I interrupted you, Shmo. I think you were still you were asking some more questions about Oscar. Yeah, I was um, just try, uh, asking the rest of the, the group, uh, specifically um, Reed next to me, if didn't we bump into a, a man, Oscar, downstairs earlier? Oscar, I saw that in the original letter, I think. Is that where we saw Oscar? You did. But uh, Olas uh, was the investigator. Olas, that's right. That's right. Tisa but will walk over next to Sophia and try to comfort her a little. Uh, do you remember your grandfather, Gree? Hey, um, can you also give give me a, a manipulation roll, if you would, because she's she's pretty distraught at the uh, at the moment. Ignore me. That's fine. I would expect that in her condition. So did you, I'm sorry, did you uh, succeed or no? Malte, did you get a six or are you still rolling? Can you not hear him? No, it's weird. It keeps muting. Refresh again or refresh Malte because it did that thing that it did before to Rasmus. That's odd that, that you guys can hear. He did not succeed. It looks like he's got one. Yeah, there we go. Now I can hear him. Um, okay. No sixes. That's right. So yeah, she's she um she continues to uh to sob. Um give me one second. Um I'm gonna um Mike's gonna go over to her and try to try to wordsmith up something to get her to calm down because yeah. he's kind of getting a little uh, annoyed at the distraction that she's causing while he's trying to work out some stuff with uh, the rest of his group. Okay. Are you going to try to use your, um, I forget what your talent is, but you have something that's, I don't know if that's what you're. Um, yeah, let's see here. Um, like automatic writing or something. I'm not sure if it applies. But... Yeah, that's to gain clues. Okay, gotcha. um, so I don't think that that would really fit. It looks like manipulation is about the other thing. Um, or actually, you know what? Inspiration. I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to try to give her some kind of motivational speech. You know, it's. I like it. Yeah. This. Uh, your father was holding you back. He was a real real pain in the ass with him out of the way you know you can finally run this thing you can live your dream um all that kind of good stuff uh let's see here it's like the newt rockney speech but with dead parents i guess something yeah Ooh. you can you know you can finally rip out that damn bar and put up a stage and host your all the theater you want um, uh, looks like I got two sixes. Yep, I can see that one. Um, so yeah, so she does like she she you know starts to straighten up her her back a bit as she's sitting there on the ground, and um, she kind of gets gets more of a calmness and and maybe uh, more of a confidence uh, about her, and um, she says, "Yes, he was my father, but um, you know he did beat both." both my mom and, and myself. And he, he never took to the interest that we both had in the art and the occult. He, he hated all of that. Um, yes, you know, my, my mother cheated on him, but who wouldn't have given how he treated her? And then she, she, she kind of, she gets a little bit of clarity in her in her in her eyes um, as well. She wipes her tears away and and she 
and she hears you talk about Oscar and she, 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 she says, you know, I've been having dreams and there's always a man. He's always dressed impeccably young man. Um, there's always, always a man there. I, I don't know who he is, but I continue, continue to dream of him. Your mother cheated on your father. He did. She did. Yes, she did cheat on him. It was with an actor. It was a fling. It didn't mean a whole lot, but she needed something. I didn't. I, I didn't know him. She, she spoke of him as being kind and uh, generous, but um, I know nothing more of him. Only, only that um, at least the one time, it made her happy, but she, she did not stay with him long. Do you know where she met him? Or where he was from, maybe. I don't. She, you know, she she didn't talk of him. Only I only noticed that she would have a glimmer in her eye when she spoke of him. Well, that certainly mm -hmm. explains uh, a few things, but still, that's no excuse for the way uh, for him putting his hands on either one of you. I agree. I, I agree. We, we did not deserve that. So uh, now that she's calmed down a bit, uh, I'll uh, ask her again about her grandfather. And uh, was he into the arts and the occult as well? I, I did not know my grandfather. Um, so I really, I don't know if he was into, uh, into the occult at all. I, yes, I, I am not aware. Uh, when when I was downstairs and noticed uh, Sammy hanging around down there, did I? <laughs> what was everybody else doing? Were they still asleep? Yep. Yep. Okay. They were. Yep. Everyone else down there was was still out. I'd like to um, maybe go and see where Malte got attacked and maybe make like a vigilance roll. Would that be possible? Where Malte, uh, and what are you trying to discern? Um, really to just kind of discern any clues or anything that might lead us to perhaps like the revenants um, like remains is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, sure. Yeah, give me, um, yeah, go ahead and, and you go up there and, and give me a uh, vigilance roll. Okay, like cool. It. And can I, oh, can I use my, I think it's advantage. I did that for vigilance at the start. So I'd like to use that while I do it. Sure. Okay. Let me roll real quick. Now, do I get a negative on this because I have a condition, a mental condition? You do. You just, so if you, if you have all your dice up, if you click on one of the dice, left click, it should take one away. And that's that's the way to kind of handle that. I think it just rolled it when I clicked. You said left click or right click? Uh, left click on one of the dice, one of the like actual oh, shape of the dice. Gotcha. Okay. I see now. Okay. I got one six on that. Okay. Um so and and obviously you uh and you can explain your background if you'd like more than others, but you do have a uh a feeling and you have something that comes over you and for a moment you get a a vision of a root cellar and there's a there's a door and there's kind of it's, it's almost just a mound that's uh built into the earth but you get a vision of it that seems to be in in the corner of the garden um, back behind where the stable is and it's just a fleeting vision but that's what you see Okay, I'll I'll fly back down the uh, attic and I'll kind of rush to um, Sophia and I'll say, "Do you have a root cellar where you keep your storage or anything on uh, around?" She says, "Yes, there there is. It's it's back behind the uh, the uh, stable and it's 
it's kind of back where my, my mother's conservatory before it, um, it just collapsed um, as, as the rest of this place is. But yes, there is a root subtle there. We, you know, we keep supplies and, and various things for the, uh, um, for the, uh, the kitchen. I lost everybody's cameras. Boy, I wonder if that's me or if I need to refresh, but I lost you guys all. The stream still seems to be there. Let's see. I just need to reboot. Yeah, let me try to for a second. See if I just refresh what that does. Technical difficulties, guys. Give me one second. In the root cellar. Huh. There we go. Sorry, I lost. I had lost you guys all. Uh, I just. We still can't see. Yeah, him. it's coming up. We can't hear him either. It's coming up. Guess who's back in the room? Yeah. Guess who's back? Back he's again. Not, there he yeah. is. Yeah. There yeah. I just, I just did what you guys did. I rebooted because I lost all your cameras. So I just reboot. I just no. refreshed for a second. Gotcha. So anyway, you heard the root cellar. I didn't hear anything else after that, but you heard that vision. So I'm sorry, Rasmus. What? Where did you go yeah, from there? So I, I just, you know, flew back down to the um, the crew and I asked Sophia about the root cellar and I, I let them know that I've got a, a suspicion that uh, the remains might have been left by the family here. Um, yep. So I think we should walk and talk. Excellent. Are, are, are we heading towards the root cellar then? Is that where everyone is uh, going? Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. Let me do a map. Is I, it... I'm going to pocket the journal as well. Okay, let me just put some tokens on here real quickly. I'll let you guys move them around as I get them on here. Okay, um, so you open the door to this uh, root cellar, and as you do so, um, oh, actually, hold on. Yeah. Um, as you do so, the you you open it opens up into what appears to be this very large dark cave, and it it seems much bigger than the root cellar should be. On the walls are shelves of food, um, but they're crawling with maggots and bugs and rats are just scurrying over all these shelves. And you also hear a strong wind as you're in here. Um, and all of a sudden, there's a strong wind that comes through this huge gust and you hear this whispering on the wind that says, Albert, my love, you were everything to me. You let Piri kill me, Hacha. My name was, and you just hear these things. Um, and then all of a sudden you see a vision of a, a, a man, a young man, that is in very expensive clothes. His eyes are glittering and he, he appears to be maybe looking past you at, at someone or something. And he's smiling. He seems extremely happy. But then his neck just bursts open, almost as if it's on a on a hinge. And it just it's, it's it just starts gushing blood. And he falls to the ground, and you can see him trying to scream. As he screams, he only you just hear this gurgling sound. And as his body collapses, as soon as it collapses on the floor, it decays in an instant. And out of this decay, you see these maggots crawling um, throughout his remains as it disappears. And I need everyone to give me a uh, fear test. And it's against fear. Actually, um, yeah, give me a fear test. Um, you need to get one success for everyone. And you all can add three because all of you are together. 
So you can add three to your roll. It turned That's to logic everybody again. Logic say, or empathy, right? Yes, logic or empathy. Yep. I say this is why I don't leave my house. One. Oh my God. For the fear test, it's affected by conditions. Uh, yeah, it is. You still, yeah, you have to do a minus one. Still, still got it. All right, so Margie, if you didn't, you can take um, a condition, or you can push it. But if you don't want to push it, you can take a mental condition, and then I'll need you to roll a d6 as you do that. You need me to roll a d6? Yes, and just yeah, just straight up d6. Yep, one. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take the I'm gonna take the hopeless condition. Okay. And I got a four. Okay, so for the next four rounds, you're terrified. And you can choose to attack the um, anything that uh, displays itself that is um, um, threatening you. You can freeze where your body basically refuses to move. Or you can flee, which would mean you would be you know running out of the root settle, cellar. Um, and you need to do that for basically the next four rounds before you gain control of yourself. And as she's doing that, and as Oscar's body is decaying, um, out of that decay, you see this creature kind of forms out of the out of the ground and out of the decay. So uh, you can, so Margie, tell me if you, I mean, you can attack that creature, you can run, or you can just freeze. So you can, you can play that however you'd like. I think Margita, she drops down on the ground and kind of wraps her arms around her knees and she's just sitting there and she's, no, 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 See, mother, mother, you just don't understand. You don't know what's going on and we have to, things are just... There's just there's just so much going on around here in the city and Papa his job and she's panicking and just mumbling to herself in this very like innocent and kind of childlike sounding voice. Okay, awesome. And as as he does that, um, or as she does that, you notice a couple things. Um, So you notice coming in from the entrance to the root cellar, you see um, Father Clarhead, and you also see what appears to be, and, and Shmo, you'd remember this because you saw the cook that was down there um, next to Sammy's body where he hung himself. But you see these two folks, they're shambling and stumbling in, and their eyes are kind of basically in the back of their heads as they shamble forward to you and you you hear them mumbling Kacha, Hilma, Kiri as they have this look in their eyes as they appear to be heading your way um, ready to potentially attack you. So tell me what everyone is doing while Margit is uh, frozen. So Malte, what do you what do you do? I'll start with you. I am uh, leveling my rifle at that uh, creepy looking thing. If it doesn't look too ethereal and I you don't, know, a bullet would go right through it. I have to aim at one of the others if that's the case. Uh, you can you can attack whatever you want. So you're welcome. If you want to shoot at the uh, what appears to be the revenant, go for it. Yeah, I'll take a pot shot with my rifle at it. So just uh, click on the um, D6 in my uh, range combat. Yep. Oh, I got one six, not five, but one six. Okay. So um, your bullet hits it. It doesn't seem to to do a ton, but it does uh, it does hit it. Um, and uh, look at your chat when you have a, a moment, Yurash. Um, 
here in uh, in Discord. In Discord. You know, that's when Gilded would have come into handy where you could shoot a voice message straight to somebody specifically. Does it? Yeah, you could, yeah. Wow. Um, so after that happens, these these things shamble up next to both of you. And Schmo, I will give you the next action. Um. So looking through my equipment here, it looks like... Looks like I have a camera. Is it? Would it be an action to like snap a picture when all this kind of shit first starts happening? Uh, like, sure. Like a free action. Yeah, I, I, I'd probably give you a, a fast. You have a fast, basically a fast and a slow action. So I'd let you do that with a fast action if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, that's just for you know for my own records. I I I don't normally see this kind of stuff. I would have definitely taken a picture of this. Um, and if I could do something else, I would whistle and call what looks to be my pet dog in so that we could okay. punch whatever's coming up to me. You can do that. Right. What do I, how do I need to use for close combats? So what do I need to do to do that? To, uh, to hit or to, uh, to punch one yeah, of the ones in front of you? If you have something in your hand that you want to use, then you can use uh, close combat, which should be down under your weapons. Or if you just want to use like a kick or a punch, there should be like a force, but there should be a, um, yeah. And I think, you know what, you might have to click on both the, um, the weapon and then either the close combat or the uh, force, depending on if you want to punch or if you're going to use a weapon. Um, so I'm just, I guess I'm just going to try to shove the person away from me. Um, okay, so you're going to shove Anjali or Father Clarhead? Uh, so Anjali is directly in front of me there. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so that would be... Um, force. A force roll then? Yep, yep. Make sure here. All right, one six. So yeah, so uh, Anjali, um, you shove her and her body is kind of limp. She she falls back and, and falls down. And right now she's kind of laying down on the ground prone. All right. right. And Father Clarhead comes up to you. So Rasmus, he's, he's getting ready to, it looks like he's getting ready to punch you. But I will let you act first. What would you like to do? Yeah, so if he's getting ready to punch me, uh, let me ask first, is the Revenant like in the same zone as us or would you, would I have to move? You'd have to move. He's probably, he's, he's at least a zone away from you. I am going to, um, instead of attacking the father, I'd like to maybe survey the, our surroundings here and mm -hmm. try and find this corpse that we need to bury, unless yeah. that's clearly somewhere in the room of Sure. Um, so you kind of notice, um, based on where you are, you notice off in kind of this area right over here, it looks like to you that it's um, it, it's kind of raised and it's softer ground. It looks like there's certainly been some, something has been dug and, um, and buried over there in the corner. Okay. It, did that take my action? Uh, I would say um, it would it would take uh, probably a fast fast action to scan and notice. So I'd give you your slow action, which you can use still use. Okay, I would like to kind of shove the doctor away as well, just kind of get him away from me, not trying to you know kill him or anything like that. So would I just roll? Would I still be able to roll with my walking stick, or do you want me to roll force or what? No, you can you can roll like if you if you want to like smack him away or whatever, use it almost like two hand push. Yeah. You can do that. I'm thinking like pushing yeah. the two hands. Yeah. Absolutely. So use okay. use your close combat. Okay. Close combat, and then that's is that plus one with the walking? I think I can just click the walking stick, and it does it all out of it. it. Probably does. Let's, yeah, I think it did. 
I think just the one six on that. Okay. So, but that was that was enough. Um, and a, as you do that, the uh, the father kind of falls falls back, and his his jacket you know flops open, and you know you see his rosary falls to one side, and he, can, he has a kind of a, a flask of of holy water that you know falls next to him, and he's kind of scrambling to try to get up. And as that happens, the revenant um disappears and you see the vision of of oscar again so you see him he's just kind of drifting in and out but he's he's watching you intently um and he just kind of stands there and emotions and the father kind of stands up and he comes towards you and he tries to uh punch you and he's going to go after you, Rasmus, with a with a punch. Um, he will do. Yep, just going to kick or punch you. And he kind of he kind of catches you. You're you were focused on the the dirt in the mound. He kind of catches you, and because you used your fast and slow action, you can't try to necessarily dodge out of the way. So he clocks you and you take one um, physical condition. So you can decide which one you take, but you have one physical condition. And Anjali does the same thing. She kind of gets up and shambles your way and tries to punch you, Mr. Mr. Mike. And let's see what she does. And she connects um, with you. So you take one, again, one uh, physical condition, whichever one you choose. Um, probably uh, wounded. Okay. And Margie, you're, you're trying to come around, but you're still, what are you as you're, as you're still trying to shake off this fear? What's your character doing as uh as you see all this around you. Um, I think uh, you said he had like holy water that he spilt on the ground, right? Uh, it, the flask fell on the ground. So yes, it's the it's flask. laying on the ground. Yep. I think, uh, is it actually spilling out or is no. the water like it's still it's in just, just a flask. It's, it's a full flask. It's so flask. you see the rosary there and you see the, the, the flask okay. that are on the ground next to him. So I think when the flask uh, hits the ground, it kind of bounces in front of her and maybe a little bit lands like right in front of her feet where this is, um, where this is all happening. And she, um, she, I think maybe she starts to reach out to it and she kind of, it's, it's kind of pulling her out, but she's going, but mama, papa, papa will be so close. He'll be so he'll be so mad we got we have to put this way we have to make sure it's filled and she'll uh like kind of take that and start to um like move like she's gonna reach out and pick this flask up as she's starting to come out of it all right um so we are about malta what would you like to do as you kind of see this vision of, of oscar kind of wavering in front of you he's um he seems to be um you know, intently looking at what everyone's what everyone's doing, um, but at the moment he is not doing anything. What would you like to do? Okay, I did see uh, Argeet uh, go for the flask or try to go for the flask of holy water, and uh, I think I'm gonna mosey on over there and try to grab the flask that she was reaching for and uncork it and spray it on Oscar. Say, you won't take my soul. Switch it back and forth with this uh, necromancer, or uh, or revenant. Okay, stand um, stand by one second. And um, Rasmus, I just DM'd you something. Yeah, if I can, you know, use say a couple words to Malte as I see him walking, 
I'll just say, not the ghost, you idiot, the corpse. I'll just say that. His corpse, his corpse. Good point, sir. And I'll cozy out over here and sprinkle it on the... Is that where you're indicating? Uh, the yeah. Where... Yeah, and Rasmus was pointing you in that direction, egging you okay. to where it was. Good, good. So I'll, I won't dump the whole bottle or a whole flask on it. I'll just sprinkle some on top of the dirt. Trickle down into the grave safe there. Okay. And as as you start doing that, um, the the wind is whipping up more, and you see a howling, and you start seeing Oscar's mouth open, and you can see him starting to scream. And as that happens, we go back to uh, Schmo. What would you like to do? Um. Lady uh, here is still coming at me, correct? Uh, yeah, she is. All right. Um, I mean, she's not quite there. I mean, you could certainly, there's a no like opportunity attack. I mean, you could certainly go after her. You could do whatever, but um, she's, she's almost on you, but not quite. Yeah, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to shove her to the ground again. All right. Go for it. Force. And then, all right, it looks like I got my condition checked, so it looks like it only did four instead of five. Oh, really? That sh It shouldn't actually automatically, but that's... Two, three, four. Okay, nope, it didn't do it automatically, so okay. let me get rid of one. Oh, that was the wrong thing. And of course, it rolled a six. You watch. I'm going to get rid of it, and now I'm not going to roll a six. Everyone, that's what I did. <laughs> Hey, look at there, what I tell you. <laughs> you try, but you don't, yeah. yeah. I, try, I try to push her, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm shaken have, uh, after being accosted, and I just kind of can't get my bearings. And you can, um, you can save your free, uh, sorry, your fast action if you'd like, and if she comes at you, you could try to parry your dodge. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go back. To, uh... Hey, Gideon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before you uh, go on, yeah. someone in the chat just said that Malta is pretty quiet, and everyone else is a little bit quieter than you are. Oh, okay. Try to turn that up a bit. Sound Thank you. Ship. Right, I appreciate that. Yeah, Malta has been a little quiet tonight. I've noticed that. Let me try to do one other thing. Now I have moved the mic a little closer. Okay. That might help. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I appreciate that, Sidewinder. Um, all right. I tried to turn it up just a bit. So, um, all right. So, Rasmus, what would you like to do? Yeah. Uh, seeing that Father's not messing around, um, I'm actually going to maybe try and help Margie up is there can I do anything like that in can I like help my friend who's yeah failed their fear yeah, you could you could definitely try to um yeah try to uh, shake her um try and get you know someone up so they can help out with the the people um what would I roll for that um you would roll let me just look and pull up the character sheet one second just say if I can find it well, I want you will I would say something like inspiration you're trying to kind of wake her out of it um so yeah I would say I would say inspiration could I use my my liquor to help with that yeah absolutely on, on you or her on either you or her either one I'll, I'll accept either I like it okay yeah I'll do that and I'll, I'll roll inspiration Oh, and I think I got a negative one because of that. Yeah. So I think I'll, I'll roll my three dice and hopefully I get a six. <laughs> yes, I got a six. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you're able to, uh, you know, and you guys can see how that happens. But, yeah, Marjeet is back to fully, fully functional. Yeah, inspired. I'll just pull out the bottle and I'll go, here, Doc, drink up. And I'll, like, help her hold it up to her lips so she can plug it down. Um. 
I think she'll uh, she'll probably take it and take like a swallow or two, and then she'll pull back and kind of shake her head and be like, "Oh, sir, that is just that is just horrible. I'm I'm too young to drink something like that." And it takes her a minute, and then she kind of coughs a little bit and she shakes her head and she's like, "Oh, what a what a I, I, yes, yes, okay, okay, great. Um, uh, thank you. Yes, yes, I, I um." quite embarrassing now don't you think what is going on and she'll kind of stand up off the ground i'll uh i'll just let her know that we're trying to consecrate the the dead man and can i save would that like take my slow can i use save my fast yeah that okay I'd like that's to fine do that. okay. okay sounds good so um the father uh in the meantime, yeah, he is going to try to wipe at you. Find him. Right. And again. Ah, and he does not. He's he stumbles as he's trying to make his way towards you and he is not able to hit you. So Jalee is going to try to do the same thing. He is going to try to swipe. She shambles towards you and she misses as well. She just seems to be clumsy and stumbling and she misses. So we will go back up to Rosh will let you go, and then um, Margie. All right. Uh, did the holy water um, affect anything? It seemed it seemed to anger Oscar, um, and he is continuing to scream as you know the the wind is whipping through the this cavern, and uh, he's screaming. But that's all that's happened so far. Well, I'll spray a little bit of the holy water on him. Um, see if it say see if this helps. Might feel better. Okay. You, you spray it on him. It uh, it doesn't seem to have any effect. But All right. you can just, uh, keep an eye on that uh, grave area there and see if anything comes of it. So, Margie, what would you like to do before I go back to Shmo, since you are now fully functional again? Um, I think she kind of gets up and she sees, like, Malta go over and try to throw a little bit of this on Oscar and sees it kind of, like, go through him and stuff, you know, and, like, not do anything. And she'd probably march over and she'd be like, oh, you are such a fool sometimes, and try to take the thing from him and dump the rest of the holy water on the ground on the corpse. Okay, all right. Excellent. And that certainly the, the winds and the howling gets louder and louder as you can, as you do that. Now, is there any kind of, I have to ask, uh, is there any kind of like sort of ritual type stuff that we say to make this stuff happen faster or better? Um, like, is that a thing that we do? I think somebody in your party has an idea around that, so I'll let him answer. I, I yeah, I asked you a question about that. Oh, He's oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I haven't got it. No, you're good. I was just waiting to let you know because I, I know you're doing twenty things at once. All good. Uh, Just mess. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, uh, seeing Margie dump the, the bottle, I'll, I'll let her know that we've got to perform a ritual, and I've just got my hands full at the moment with the father. Okay. Um, so, since he told me that, can I do a learning roll to see sure. if I know what Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Let's do it. Okay. So let me roll 
me hit clear because I forgot to clear last time. Learning. And then if I go down to... Um, trying to... Um, can I use my advantage on this one? Uh, what, I don't what, what, I don't remember what your advantage is for. What is it? My advantage is for learning. Yeah, absolutely. Do yeah, it. So, okay. And then I have to check that when used. Um, and then addition, insights. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I can add on to this to... Try to maybe get a success. Okay, I'm gonna, I guess that's it. So I will go ahead and roll that and cross my fingers. I've not been doing well, guys. <gasps> Three successes. Holy crap. So you can uh, tell me how and, and what you say, but yes, you definitely somehow recall the ritual. So I'll let you play out how that works. But yes, you, you absolutely know what the ritual is. Um, so she finishes dumping it out, takes the flask and like just tosses it over her shoulder. And then she immediately gets down on her knees and she's going to kind of start drawing these symbols in like the dirt and like stuff that's on the floor of this, uh, root cellar. Okay. And she's going to, um... Uh, and she's going to kind of start muttering uh, these words that essentially, when translated, they're not in, you know, a common language, but um, they go along the lines of, In the darkest night, you lie to rest like a babe upon the mother's breast. This is where we'll provide a place for your self and soul to hide. And she kind of just... It keeps repeating this over and over in this rhyme as she's writing all these symbols and doing this stuff. Awesome. Great. So as, as you do that, um, the wind, the howling stops in the, uh, in this cavern and you see Oscar kind of like flicker between this human form and the revenant. Um, and he finally stays in Oscar in the Oscar form for a little bit longer and the scream kind of slowly fades away from being a scream and almost to a smile as he as he kind of mouths the words thank you and disappears as everything in the root cellar goes completely quiet and you've banished the Revenant Vassin. And we could certainly, uh, if this were a longer adventure, we could role play how you guys exit, but you have banished the Vassin and completed the adventure. I think uh, Rajit would kind of stand up as soon as it was done. Like, and she'd kind of look over at Molson and just, see, you just have to do things correctly instead of the way you always want to do everything. <laughs> Just so you know, I like abuse. So <laughs> nice. I'll uh, I'll walk over to the to the doctor and I'll say, well, I think you owe me a, a new bottle, but good work. She'll uh she'll kind of look at um Rasmus and she'll say, that can definitely be arranged. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> What did you guys think? I know it was different. I know it was very, yeah, very different rule set. First time I ran it. What, what do you guys think? It's very different. Um, I like this kind of stuff, kind of like the other okay. one you ran with us too, the house, but where it's more of this RP stuff than yeah, yeah. the, um, than, you know, a lot slash, of crazy kinda. amounts of dice rolling and stuff. So I really enjoy this kind of stuff. Um, I had a lot of fun with my character archetype because her, uh, like her character details and stuff um like her motivation was to explore her trauma was a corpse came back to life during an autopsy that's right she doing. that's right and her dark secret was that she had two separate personalities which that's... is why when she freaked out she went into this like childlike personality of that yep. i tried so i tried to portray that and then she had um for relationships 
Malta literally said, you annoy me. <laughs> so that's why she was picking on you so much. And she slapped you and went after you and stuff because you just ignore annoy her. And he gave me the instructions of like, who do you think wronged you in the group? And I was like, well, obviously this guy over here that annoys me. Exactly. Um, and Hugo, like my relationship with you was, I trust you with my secrets. So she was, that's why she was like giving you the book and like talking to you about stuff. And then Rasmus, I, I finally got to throw something in at the end, which is really awesome because my relationship with you was, I dream of you at night. Wow. Ah, <laughs> so nice. that's why she got a little bit of that hitting on you there at the end. I like it. <laughs> I, like it. I didn't, I didn't really super role play those, but I did enjoy the session and I especially enjoyed the, the skill system more than anything and the different types of, you know, get a D six and you can, I like that you can push your role. Yeah. I, one thing I didn't like, and it was nothing with how you ran it. Yeah, yeah. The system is, and maybe you guys can help me understand it. Is yeah. it just seems like when you fail a roll, like against like a Vassin, if the the detriment is to get a condition, I feel like there's almost like no reason not to push it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean the the thing with the Vassins is like they're they're impossible to almost impossible to kill. I mean, you can certainly attack him like like Malte did, and he did hit him, and it kind of affected him. I, I don't a, a little bit, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could see your point. But if you become broken, right. then that really can you know, affect. And it, it also affects, you know, what condition you take, and yeah. also I think sometimes with the I'm sure there would be plenty of occasions where it's just better to eat the condition and just flee yeah. with like the mental, you know, get away from it so you can regroup. Right, reorganize and that sort of thing. So I could see both sides of it, but I, I've not not played a lot of these types of you know heavy role play games. So this is really my first yeah. time kind yeah. of doing that. But I had a ton of fun too. So yeah, thanks. Well, what'd you think? Did you? I mean, first time I've run it, so I know I probably didn't wasn't perfect. But what'd you think? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Um, and the doctor uh, scared the crap out of me. So that's why when oh. I threatened the barkeep, I was like, I'm gonna have my doctor friend come and jack you up a little bit a little yes. scalpel action that's right <laughs> um yeah it was definitely i like the i like the different skills um it reminded me a lot of uh call of cthulhu yeah i've never played it but it makes sense kind of stuff. yeah um i've i played it once and i did one of their solo adventures um and it was it was kind of neat i i like it i'm excited if my damn books would ever hurry up and get here. I'm excited to start reading it. I, I think it'll it'll play a lot better like for a campaign because like you can build up the castle and there's like this whole system around the castle and so forth. And I just had to cut that out. And I also like, um, so for the maps, I just wanted to show you guys. Um, do, 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 do. Pardon me. I, I want to run it just to make a cool castle map you know the, what i mean <laughs> these are the maps these are the maps that it came with so like i just created all the maps um and was the uh um was the uh what was i gonna say um did, did you like the voice stuff or no was that like too much uh, it was all right or was that cool or no i liked it i okay. I, I actually made a comment to you in our private discord mm about how i really liked the cool. the the recording like that and i'm Thanks. going to be banging on your door to ask you to show me how you did that because i, I like that as a occasional thing to throw in yeah some of it was so long i'm like i didn't want to just sit there and read it but it's a program called i'll send it to you but murph.ai it's just basically you throw all the text in you pick what voice you want so i and the one thing i didn't get i just i couldn't force it but the dance of dreams, the play itself, there's this really cool whole um, voice that progressed from like a woman to a man and got crazy. But I couldn't force it because it's it just the way, you, you know, it just didn't play out the way um, I could have. I didn't watch the play. We had a well, guy batter ram a door down and just. No, and that's what happens, right? But I mean, like once her dad died. I was bummed when he did that. I was like, my, my, my crowbar, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> once her dad, once her dad died, I couldn't be like, "Wait, can you really see my play? My dad's dead." But come watch the play. <laughs> so anyway, like the, uh, uh, detective and investigative back 
fiction, kind of like Cthulhu, like you guys were saying. There's a certain element of clue to it too. That yeah, you're you're looking for clues and trying to sort things out and put things together and yeah. using everybody else's skills uh, as a team to kind of balance uh, the information. It was, it was fun. Yeah, no, it was, it was different for me too. It's kind of hard. I I need to learn to try to keep everybody engaged, but it's hard when you got you know, make sure that you try to get everybody to have a role and a play. But anyway, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. I feel like everybody was engaged. Yeah. No, no, I felt like people were engaged, but I just mean, I just, yeah, sometimes it's like I had to keep remembering like, okay, let's go here. And, but uh, anyway, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I really appreciate you guys playing and testing it out with me. And those uh, that are watching, I appreciate you guys uh, watching and I'll throw it up on YouTube. And I think, I'll, I think the next time I'll try it on Fantasy Grounds. I think this worked pretty well because I like the, I like the cameras and the interaction for these role play as much as I love fantasy grounds. Um, I think for things like this, sometimes it's, it's cool to just have the cameras and a little more free flowing. So, so my, I actually, my I actually, thing okay. with the software and maybe we, we can go over it later is like, yeah. if you share a map, how do I get back to the map yeah. or the picture or something? Yeah. I keep forgetting because in fantasy grounds, I know what you guys are seeing, but when I'm sharing it to the stream, that's right. You guys probably have. That's a really good question. Um, I didn't think about that. I don't know if you can just stop. Yeah, viewing, but that's a good point. Be, like for the maps and stuff, I would think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look at that. I really like that lore keeper. I'm definitely going to talk to you more about that because that could be mm -hmm. something. Uh, when I start running my one ring campaign, it's some place for the players to keep track of session notes. it's cool i mean it's um i'm trying to remember how much it's a patreon thing but it's only like five bucks a month or something or maybe less but i got into it early um but uh did you guys look at it at all or did you kind of use it a little no, bit it. okay cool yeah, I, was I mean i know it's the whole time. oh good yeah. i mean i know it's a one shot but i just feel like these mysteries are so much going on that it's helpful so good yeah, awesome the only that I don't like about it, and maybe that's just because I don't know how to use it because we were kind of just on the fly doing it, is that like I wish that there was a space where if I click on Sophie, I wish there was a section underneath what you wrote in her description that said player notes. Oh, and that's a good thought. That has the access to it would be able yeah, to yeah. write notes about what we want I mean, underneath it, there. It might even be. Yeah, that might even be something I can request, given it's still kind of in a beta form. And and a lot of what was in there, you know, I just like, like I said, I would unhide. And I had a lot of things set up as secret that I would just click on and and open. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to write. I wanted to write notes under so yeah. I couldn't figure that out. So that would be neat to be able to do that. And I did figure out how to make a new page myself. Oh, cool. I didn't actually try to do it, but I saw the new page button and was like, oh, okay. But nice. yeah, just to be able to add notes to the character stuff would yeah. be really, really neat. All right. Well, look, I mean, I know it's getting late for everybody. I really appreciate you guys playing and uh, well, love you. to try it again. And I always enjoy when you run yeah. these off, off beat one shot. No. I like these. Yeah, definitely. And for anyone, any fathers out there, it's early, but it's kind of midnight almost, right? For some places. So happy early Father's Day, everyone. It's, uh... Father's Day on the East Coast. That's right. That's right. I hope you guys enjoy it tomorrow. So have a good one. I'm gonna be playing role player adventures with my girls tomorrow. So have a good night, guys. Nice. See everybody later. Bye. All right. See you guys. See you guys. Later. All right. So stream. Um, thanks everybody. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I enjoyed it. Sorry, I wasn't as interactive. Um my first time running that. So I had to really focus, but um, appreciate everyone that uh, came by and watched. So I will throw this up on YouTube and I hope you, uh, hope you uh, come back again next time. So thanks again, everybody for uh, watching. Really appreciate it. Have a good night all.